The Bob and Tom Show. They're your all-time favorite band. They just got back together, and you barely got two tickets to see them. But hold on. You're holding two tickets to terror. You're going to the Haunted Rock Concert. <laughs> Gee, honey, these outside parking lots are all full. Look, we're really running late here. For a couple extra bucks, just park in the arena garage. All right. Uh, yeah, let me just pull in here. $20. $20? <laughs> $20. This is special event parking. <laughs> it's the Haunted Rock Concert. Hey, these seats are terrible. What? Look, it says Section B. Yeah, B stands for behind stage. <laughs> you busted your ass to get in on time, but guess what? There's a special surprise opening act you have to sit through. Performing a very special unplugged two hour set, <laughs> Ravi Shanker! <laughs> All right. The Haunted Rock Concert! <laughs> Not only do your seats really suck, but you're sharing your section with the most pathetic, most annoying human beings on the planet. <laughs> Featuring the guy who smoked a bale of pot and stumbles to the concession stand every 15 minutes. Uh, hey, sorry about that nacho cheese sauce on your pants. Just shout it out, dude. That's what I do. And on your right side, it's the drunkest guy in the whole building. Party! <laughs> the Haunted Rock Concert. Honey, I just have to have a t-shirt. Okay, sweetie. Hey, uh, buddy, how much for the t-shirt? Fifty dollars. <laughs> Fifty dollars? <laughs> Fifty dollars, you loser. Fork it over. <laughs> the Haunted Rock Concert. Yo, dude, watch out for that frisbee. What frisbee? <laughs> the Haunted Rock Concert. Rock and roll! <laughs> <laughs> You caught us. We're, we're just here having a party. Welcome. Come on in. You're invited. Take off your skin. And rattle around in your bones. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. The glow up continues. You're being very kind. My God, I think... I think I might be attracted to you now that I think about it. Uh, last so, night at dinner. My goodness. One of my guests said, I don't think Pat Goblin looks so great now that he's stopped dyeing his hair. Yeah. What an idiot I was years ago. Just last week. Gee, we didn't try to mock you. <laughs> we didn't years. try to mock you into stopping. Oh, wait a minute. Yes, we did every show. I know. That's true. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. Hey, man. He's at the uh, I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom. Did you introduce everybody? Yes. You introduced Miss Hooker? Yep. You sure? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm going to have a tough day today. Why Why would that be any different than any other day? I just went on a coffee run, and I got a bonus cup. Oh, no. Or two. You, you got a bonus cup? Yeah. In other words, this may, this may be a very caffeinated show shortly. Oh, she, ah, okay. she liked the bone. You, you know, only drink you know. decaf. I know. I, th I ordered the decaf, but I've got He's a He's not feeling. supposed to, and he keeps lying about it. And nope. now that his there we son's... Go. I know. This says decaf ace. You can read it if you want to come. The sun's well, you, out. Don't, don't come over here. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have some. Oh, for Christ's sake, don't, don't cross that line. I and, <laughs> and we're off. The red line that we have over there. Okay. <laughs> little real estate uh, joke. Right. Uh, mm, yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I don't want to insult anybody. <laughs> Now, that's wanna, funny. I just want to congratulate Jess for being named in the Harry Carey will and getting his glasses. Those are very nice. Those are very... Uh, fashionable. Fashionable. Yeah. Well, I'm not a glasses wearer anymore. Right. I've had the vision correction, but uh, Josh is a glasses wearer. Would you mm -hmm. wear those sort of glasses? Yeah, I like a thick yeah. black frame. Those yeah. are big, heavy. Yeah. I don't think they're heavy at all. I think they're uh, made out of... Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, they look... They've got a thick... They're thicker. They are. They are thicker. The frame is, but it's lightweight. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a cool. Ma a matte cool. finish. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say the matte finish is big. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. good stuff. It's a look. Yeah. 
And Pat and I were discussing this this morning. Pat has to wear the reading glasses. Oh, yeah. And he keeps losing them. So I said, I'll bring you. A, I had to buy a string for my sunglasses. And mm -hmm. they come in six packs. So I've got five of them. I'm happy to bring over one. For you me. know, those are called croakers. Some of them are. I don't know if that. The Crocus is a brand. That's the oh, it those is? are the real tight ones that lay. I, these are the more like the string ones. The, remember the librarian. Remember Mrs. Leffler. The, the chain. Yeah, it had the chain. It, I had someone who was Leffler like. Yes, Ben, you're right. She had a chain on her glasses. Mm -hmm. I think we had Bob and Tom ones. Are you kidding? I'm pretty sure. I'll have to look. Wow. For uh, a Bahamas trip, I think. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. Well, give me a pair of those. Do you have? Like, <laughs> do you Ace Cosby have every piece? of... One piece of merchandise the Bob and Tom Show's ever put out. Not everything, but I, I have a lot of them. Pretty close. Oh, there's stuff I've seen I've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll we'll be I'll go back there. Oh my God, I didn't know we had those. Yeah, that get on eBay. Does. There's lots of stuff. Yeah, that's true. You know, a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. weird stuff. Didn't we do rubbers one time with Tom's Tom, face on Tom's them? Face. I, I did. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder what those are. I hope, I'm a, I hope I don't have any responsibility there. I, I maybe there should be like a legal disclaimer. <laughs> Leave that behind. There's a candy jar somewhere that's full. Rubber? Yeah, somewhere. And oh, it's right there. It's in Jason's office. Yeah, and it's, and it's what they say. What I guarantee uh, better erections, but uh, and, How no, long? and no pregnancies or something. Says I don't use them, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> it says, it says, remember, remember how we told Ace not to talk. <laughs> we had the meeting. How long has it been since you've worn a rubber? Oh my goodness, Josh. Uh, <laughs> a couple years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Do you just outgrow them? Do you guys just decide you're not going to wear them anymore, or how does that work? Well, let's, when you, you said how grow, well, yeah, <laughs> as you, as you're probably not familiar with it, Jess, but uh, as, as, as Social Security approaches, fortunately, your penis becomes much larger. Just a little gift there from we, the federal government. We do outgrow it. And no, I look back on my, uh, that's sort of part of my, uh, yeah, I, I stopped way too early <laughs> wearing rubbers, but I'd had a vasectomy. Like how, how yeah, but rubbers are for other things, well, too. 30 70s. years ago. Oh, yeah, STDs. Yeah, yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah, I got real lucky on that. I end. think we may have some STD news today. A oh. nice, you know, you know, Josh, a nice clean broad. That's right. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to mess with any of those. Uh, no. <laughs> sketchy. Yeah. And don't, don't limit it to the ladies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Pat, I see what you're saying. I got my own Pat this morning. Dave, right? <laughs> rubber up. Rubber up. <laughs> oh, he's going to insist on it. That, Let's do it. Remember that jingle? Rubber up. Rub for safety, rubber up. Rubber up for safety. No. No. Mm -mm. Oh. Was that an actual condom thing? No, it was actually, it was a... Texaco? Something. It was a, it was a parody of oh, buckle sure. up for safety. Oh, yeah. There was a, right. a campaign to encourage people to wear seat belts. You have to understand, seat belts weren't mandatory in automobiles, I want to say, till the early 60s. That's and true. there was a period of time when you had to pay extra for them. Hmm. The automobile companies did not want the implication that you would need seat belts in an automobile. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, and remember, and then before there was safety glass, most people in car crashes died because their carotid artery would be se <laughs> se severed by flying oh. shards of sharp glass. You Don't see, you? They they finally were convinced. Maybe 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 we should have glass that doesn't mm. slit your throat. Oh yeah, you don't have enough hillbilly in you. But I remember standing. On the seat, uh, the front seat, they had a bench seat. My grandma and grandpa had a bench seat. Mm -hmm. and I would stand in the middle. Yeah. And we would drive. They would, Let's go to the store. Okay. <laughs> Get up here, Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be right in the middle. And I remember the days the knobs and the dashboard were pointed and sharp. So if you just <laughs> run into something, they would just split your skull in half. Oh. There <laughs> was a... There, this is uh, some of this is absolutely true. There was a steering wheel in the car that Sammy Davis Jr. was in when he was in the wreck that lost his eye, and it was like a torpedo pointed, and that's where his eye hit. I've seen pictures of those right in the center of the steering right wheel, right in the center, oh, wow. yes, yep. and that's how he lost his eye. Wow, that or there's another version of that story. <laughs> That involves someone who the didn't Swedish, particularly care for his dating habits. The Swedish mafia. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, who knows what that was. Uh -huh. I I was very excited I remembered that story. No, <laughs> <laughs> no not, not so much. Well, you know, if you're going to talk about Sammy Davis Jr. only having one eye, are you familiar with uh, Sammy's work? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was great. He's sure. a legend. Yeah. Uh, his, his big hit was uh, not... Candyman. Uh, not, uh, not a particularly good song, but he, he was super talented and hung with uh, you know, Frank... Dean, it's Pete, not what Pete, I thought you were going to say. Peter Peter always hung. <laughs> you had a little pause there. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, d uh, apparently, Dean Martin and Frank were both very gifted. You know, one of their big, uh, 
they used to do a, a <laughs> Vegas show. And the, the Frank and Dean and Sammy would be up on stage. And Dean would grab Sammy, and he would go stiff. And he'd kind of lean into Dean, and Dean would look out at the audience and say, I'd like to thank the NAACP for giving me this award. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Wow. <laughs> they got yeah, away yeah. with that. Well, yeah. briefly. Um, but <laughs> so, if, if you're talking about... for a very long time. If you're talking about the Samster, you, you've got to hear this. <laughs> yes! Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> and gentlemen, performing a musical number written especially for this evening, the Disco Lifestyle Awards are proud to present Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> I want to disco marry you <laughs> and have a disco family <laughs> and we'll all live in a disco. <laughs> I love the disco lifestyle. I love the disco lifestyle. All right, let's. You know, disco is always. <laughs> Okay. I've lost my eye. Oh yeah. A little yeah. Sammy for you. Um, and by the way, if you Google Disco Lifestyle, there was an actual show called the Disco Lifestyle Awards. But if you Google it, you get that bit. Really? Uh, I it's I have never been able to find the show, and people didn't believe me that it existed. I still about only and half believe no, you. And then someone sent me a copy of Jet Magazine. I have it in my office that has the listing for the Disco Lifestyle Awards. It was supposed to be an annual award show, but then when Disco kind of poof went right. away. And it was a Dick Clark production, and I th somehow I, I think it's been pulled from the Internet. I don't know. But uh, every once in a while, someone will email me going, I saw that show. Hmm. And it, it, it was so awful, it was great. Think so, about that. The Disco Lifestyle Lifetime Achievement Award. That's wild. I was never... Well, that's not true. I think we all were, if you were a certain age, as you would say, Tom, in that when disco was... Uh, everybody had their favorite disco song, don't you think? Was it Saturday Night Fever that made it... It was th that was yeah. that it was already a big thing, and then okay. Saturday Night Fever. Yeah. There's a funny story Boz Skaggs tells. He was approached about having a song on the Saturday Night Fever album. Right. He turned them down. He said no, mm. yeah. And he put it on Looking for Mr. Goodbar, which sold four copies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saturday Night Fever sold, what, 50 million, something? Um, but, uh, yeah, but yeah, th there's there's now a disco station on the satellite. And yeah, some well, people love it. I'm pretty sure the Boss Gag song was that dirty, dirty, dirty lowdown. Dirty lowdown. Had the dirty lowdown. I, I don't want to... Send you a softball. Dirty, you, you, dirty, you. Low, dirty, dirty, low, dirty, dirty, low. Lido, Lido is the one you do. Lido, best. Uh, Lido, shuffle. <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> apparently, yes, it's, 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 too early, it's too early for the Lido shuffle, apparently. Um, I love Boss Gags. Uh, the Silk Degrees, man. Every cut on that. I well, love Boss Gags still. He's except great. Har Harbor Lights is a class. I like Harbor Lights. Yeah, uh, you would. <laughs> That's a great record. <laughs> We're over. Uh, now, um, <laughs> right now, it's, it's probably too early for the Boss Gags. Uh, we have a bunch of cool stuff coming up baseball big turnarounds yes what, what the hell's going on we'll get to that coming Major up League baseball astros win and the diamondbacks and win. Um, half the great players in the nfl appear to be on crutches we'll get to that uh but right now it's quiz time i'll start with you josh yes oh he always gets mad if i don't hi josh <laughs> hi hi tom uh what is your sleep number setting 
65, Tom. <laughs> what would yours be if we shared a bed? Tom. <laughs> well, mine happens to currently be 85. Oh. Which see? means that uh, I like a, a firm mattress, but not as firm. I used to have it at 100. Mr. McGee, what is your sleep number setting? 100. I like a uh, firm, firm mattress. Okay, now the, the beauty of the sleep number, is it was a simple idea that they have perfected. At the touch of a button, you can change the firmness of your mattress. So it's like having 40 mattresses. Actually, it's like having 80 mattresses because either side of the bed has its own setting. So if he or she over there has different tastes and firmness, everybody's going to be happy. It's that simple, but they have perfected it. Also, here's the greatest thing they've got going. they got their best deal ever. If you want to sleep at the next level, you can unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that performs as well as you do with the new Queen Sleep Number C2 Smart Bed. Yes, it's the Queen. That's helpful. Uh, it's uh, 880 bucks. That's the lowest price ever. And this is the interesting part. Special financing is now available. This is a limited time offer. Subject to credit approval, get the details on this by going to your Sleep Number store, the only place you can find the Sleep Number bed. Sleepnumber.com slash BT show. I was thinking about this. I believe I'm on year... Let's see, 15, 14. I can't remember. I'm almost on my 20th year of my sleep number bed because I had it when I was over there, then I moved over there, then I just moved over there, and I've got right. my sleep. I, lo I love my sleep number bed, and I'm not kidding. Right. I have the one also that has the thing. You press the button, zzz, the back goes up. You're yeah. in the federal witness protection. Yeah, you might want to upgrade yeah. and get that one. Uh, the, 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 here's the thing, sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Coming up, baseball scores. We have uh, interesting NFL thing. played last night. I had uh, I had it picked right. I hope you did. <laughs> we have a really interesting, fun story about uh, the great Miami University in Ohio, and um, Oxford. And my favorite cereal is in the news: shredded wheat. Oh, wait till you hear this. <laughs> How's that dinette set coming? By the way, <laughs> have they decided to add flavor. <laughs> oh no, they decided now to add now with flavor. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a great commercial? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, when we come back, I insist that you uh, go through, maybe Jess hasn't, isn't aware of this, how you prepare your shredded wheat every morning. Don't give it away. Okay, I will. But it's um, quite the process. I'm happy to do so. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Dr. Will Miller, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Yeah, you are, and thanks for tuning in on a Friday. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> Ooh, I wanna be a plus size model, the kind that can't run very far. Cause if I could only be a plus size model, I know I'd be a big, big star. Please feed me. <laughs> so some, some people get sensitive about it, uh -huh. but don't. Because the beautiful women are the big women. And, I agree. Uh -huh. And I like I gained some weight, then I couldn't afford to keep it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, and I want a carbo load without having to exercise. I don't want to worry if the fat goes to my thighs. I want to wear a plus size preserve of room. I want to eat chips and wash them down with beer. Size dream, but I'm plus sized ornery for the best job in the world goes to the bigger girls than me. They're all sluts. <laughs> 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 It's Josh, and of course... Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom at Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Big Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. And... <laughs> Is that where you go? Are we eligible? Uh, Paul, you uh, kind of came off the road as a comedian uh, many years ago when you started doing the TBS show. How many? We started in 95, so really? 14 years. Wow. Doing it. But you occasionally go back out on the road and do I do. Stand -up. I do. I took a little time off uh, the last couple of years, but now I'm... Uh, I'm Getting back out there, you know, mm -hmm. it can it can kind of burn you out being being on the road. But, sure. You know, I always see stuff on the road that 
you just don't see anywhere else, and it just makes you laugh. And, and mm-hmm. I was staying at this uh, this uh, hotel and uh, one of my club dates, and uh, I go down to the to the jacuzzi, uh, mm-hmm. and there's a sign above the jacuzzi that says, "No one shall jump or dive into the jacuzzi." <laughs> Now, if you're going to dive <laughs> headfirst into a jacuzzi, are you really going to be swayed by the word shall? <laughs> Come on, boys, let's go into jacuzzi. Hold on. I see the king's English. <laughs> wow. What the heck? I'm guessing that was a, a, a lawyer. They really should That have just done. made me laugh all day. Mm-hmm. That takes away the loneliness of the road. Yeah. You can't get lonely. Mm-hmm. Last time you were here, Eric, you impressed us with your uh, musical skills. You, uh, oh, that's right. You, you are, are a manualist. manualist. Yes, I am. Now, for those that don't know what that means, manualism is the um, art. art of manipulating one's hands to make. Uh, there you go. To make that sound. <laughs> that, that wasn't me yet. I didn't. There, there we go. <laughs> you, oh, you man. must be. Sorry, excuse you me. You must kick ass at parties. My, that was my no hands. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know the chicks dig this. Yeah, well, I know they do. <laughs> Yeah, if you're at a party, yeah, this is my, Eric, this is my, this I go, this is my go-to on a first date. I'm gonna this say, if you're at a hey, party baby. and you see Eric and there's a big group of guys hanging around him, this is what they're doing. <laughs> wow. They're looking, yeah, they're looking uh-huh. for that, and, and then my Dungeons and Dragons kit too. Uh-huh. I'm doing that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, give us a sample. All right, there you go. Very nice. <laughs> I see the see the group of guys laughing now at yeah. the party. Uh-huh. Yeah. What? Wow. While the girls are all over there have rolling you, their have, eyes. That is amazing. Have you ever been laid doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Susie Suzuki and Sam Saber. Now, this is the true story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. As told by yours truly, Tom Tom Whiskey, Whiskey, Frontier Frontier Doctor. Doctor. Good morning. Well, I never will forget it. Susie Suzuki had to get married at a very young age. Yeah. Uh, She was impregnated by her husband, Hyaston. She never really liked Hyaston, but... They had 12 children. You know, highest on up and died, and Susie remarried. Uh-huh. Um, I'll tell you, it was really something, because she married her true love, Sam Samurai. Oh, touching. Yep. With Sam, she had 12 more children. Wow. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. He's over there at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold engaged and paying attention. Excellent. Actually, no, I'm reading some stuff over here. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, uh, Wishful uh, thinking. Uh, Pat. Yeah. I'm going to need you to uh, get uh, your instruments prepared. Uh, We had an interesting story yesterday before we get to uh, sporting news uh, that I thought uh, we might share with everybody. Um, It's a story about the the strip club, uh, a a strip club that was actually uh, uh, put in uh, to uh, allegedly into a neighborhood uh, house that was a bunch of squatters. Do you have the details on that? Officials in Georgia arrested four people at a house where neighbors say they ran an illegal strip club. Oh, yeah. Residents (laughs) of South Fulton neighborhood told WSB-TV... Son of a bitch. <laughs> <TV. laughs> that they kept them up all hours of the night with a lot of partying and sporadic gunfire. <laughs> That's a party. Yeah. They are also <laughs> sporadic gunfire. Yeah. They are also accused of running an illegal strip club on the premises. Residents said the squatters raced through the streets, had piles of trash at the home, and one neighbor said they had live horses on the property. 
Well, sure. Yeah. Well, you could ride a horse and then ride a lady. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, How about that? I never yeah. heard of like, an illegal strip club. Pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, I guess you have to have a permit for well, that. Well, it's in a regular neighborhood. That's what was yeah, bothering people. Not zoned. <laughs> yeah. I imagine this wasn't that regular a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. Yeah, yeah the, the, the champagne room and the <laughs> VIP club mm -hmm. had a microwave, a dishwasher. It was it was kind of low rent. Um, can you imagine your neighbor comes over? Hey, can I borrow uh, sh sugar? Uh, uh, sh no, she doesn't work here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Cinnamon's here. <laughs> uh, cinnamon. <laughs> Rosemary's still here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, didn't we find, isn't there like a website where you can pick your stripper name? I'm sure, yeah. Based on some. Isn't it like your your childhood dog's name in the street you grew up on? Childhood pet. Childhood pet. I'm and sorry. Then the, the street I thought that, that, is that, is that, I thought that was, is that your porno name or your stripper name? I don't You're know. Born. Okay. Oh, yeah. my bad. Stripper names have a certain, a lot of them are automobiles. Mercedes. Yeah, Mercedes. Oh, yeah. Lexus. Yeah, exactly. Nova, stage four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, give yeah, it up for Acura. <laughs> <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't get too many tips. It's Pinto. <laughs> but she loves it in the rear. Oh, she oh loves hey. She explodes. Uh -oh. Wasn't that the one that used to blow yeah, up? Yeah, apparently quite easy, <laughs> uh, easier than it should have. Yeah, if you hit a rear thing. Sorry, there's probably a Pinto club somewhere. Mm -hmm. my, my buddy in high school, uh, uh, David, he owned a Pinto, and we... Uh, we drove the hell out of that thing. We, <laughs> it was uh, it was yellow, and he got a, it at a discounted price. So for yellow, wow! And then we had it painted brown. It did not turn out very well. But <laughs> our favorite thing was we'd go into uh, the apple orchard and drive the car and try to weave through the trees and stuff. It was very fun. Well, that's, well, that's good. That's good white trash fun. Yeah, well. Isn't it? Right. Damn right. My friend Joe, whose uh, father could have bought General Motors, uh, he got his son um, the cheapest Mustang you could get. I swear to God, it was primer paint, mm -hmm. and it had three on the tree. We talked about that the other day. Remember the the shifter was on the steering column yep three on the tree yeah um but and it wasn't the cool mustang it was the later version that was <laughs> kind of crappy yeah and not mm. the great one that they make now uh but the point is these guys had a strip club mm -hmm. in a neighborhood uh illegal strip club and um uh you have a little tribute pad yeah i'll build a stage you get the strippers that we saw at the club today <laughs> staring at big boobs high on gin and juice oh we'll make it rain while girls 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 plays and plays our house is a strip club <laughs> in a small house <laughs> with two cops in the yard <laughs> lots of stolen cars now the neighborhood is trashy cause of us us all clear a room you get the singles that we robbed <laughs> from the bank <laughs> today hey hey <laughs> gram of coke nash thank you very much <laughs> a I nice was, little um, tribute i've been looking for us how to how to make your own stripper name online and one of these but i it took me to stripper w websites there's one stripper evidently she's a big star her name's lil pump lil pump <laughs> wow She's, All right. She's what did they, very, uh, very popular. There are a lot of Lils out there. Lil Pump. I knew you'd enjoy that. Lil Nas X. Mm -hmm. and this, this all started with Stevie Wonder, you know. Right. I, yeah, you guys taught me that last time I was he here. He was little Stevie Wonder. Yeah. But he had the good taste when he matured to drop it. Right. Well, so did the little, little Bow Wow. He's just Bow Wow now. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But I think some of them cling to the Lil part. Yeah. It just could be kind of embarrassing. Okay, your stripper name is the brand of your first car... Plus the last thing you put in your mouth. Wow. This is according to the New Yorker. So I'm Fiat Coffee? <laughs> Fiat mm. Coffee. Yeah. That's all right. That's not a good stripper name. Mm -mm. Coffee's kind of a hot stripper name. Yeah. 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 If you're, wouldn't that be for a, a, a woman of color? Well, Probably. We'll keep you up all night. I'm Dodge Pringle. Dodge Pringle. <laughs> You've had a Pringle already? Well, the last thing I put in my mouth it was yesterday, probably. Mm. You haven't had anything to drink this morning? Oh, Pringle Pepsi then. Uh, no, Dodge Pepsi. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense either. No. Okay, Ace? Thunderbird Spaghetti-O. 
<laughs> Thunderbird Spaghetti. I'm Dodge Green Tea, but I'm going to go with the brand of green tea. Oh. I think this works. I'm Dodge Bigelow. Uh, oh. Wow. Dodge Bigelow is a great That's foreign great. name. You come out in no shirt wow. and a bow tie. And... I mean, there was, of course, Deuce Bigelow. Yeah. I mean, male oh, yeah. Gigolo. Male Gigolo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hung like a javelin. Dodge Bigelow. Well, <clears throat> Jessica. Hello, Jess. I guess I could go with Eagle Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, what kind of what kind of coffee is that? Uh, oh, it's uh, Pike. That's Eagle uh, Pike? Eagle uh, Eagle Pike Place. E Eagle Pike <laughs> sounds like a street. Hardy, yeah. Hardy Roast? No. Yeah. yeah. Pat Gowden, first car you owned. I'd be Volkswagen Celery. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. You've had celery to eat already today? Uh, last, yesterday, at the end there. Okay. The Did it, well, you had black coffee, so you could be, you oh, could yeah. be, uh, what, what was it again? What kind of car was it? Uh, it was a Volkswagen Bug, my first car. Oh, you could be a uh, Beetle. Bug Black. Oh, Beetle. Bug yeah. Black sounds like a... Yeah, you could Beetle Black is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, or, yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. VW Black. Yeah. Oh, oh that's good, too. You, you, of, you, you use the initials? Yeah. VW yeah. Black sounds like the writer of the movie Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> we can get Pam Greer. Yes. The, the project's on. If we can, I'm not right. Uh, coming up, by the way, um, we're going to feature an interview we did with Bill Burr, comedian. Bill has a new movie out on Netflix as we speak. It's called Old Dads. With uh, great actors in it, yeah. including Bobby Carnavale and... Bokeem. Bokeem Woodbine. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and Bokeem, what a great name that is. Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, you're not going to go to first grade and have eight Bokeems in your class. Nope. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, we do have uh, some sporting news, uh, a couple of uh, kind of interesting things going on. Well, Major League Baseball playoffs, Tom. Jose Abreu hit a three-run homer right after Jordan Alvarez's tie-breaking sack fly, and the Astros pulled even in the American League Championship Series in Arlington with a 10-3 victory over the Rangers in Game 4. So far, the road teams have won all the games in this series. Pretty wild. So that's crazy Houston has stuff. won the la nine of the last ten games they've played in Arlington. Somebody's been, you ever been in that stadium? The sports mm -hmm. radio. No, I, I have mean, not. It's really nice. You've been in there, too? Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Yes. With the exception of Austin, I tried to stay out of Texas. Because of the Dallas Cowboys thing. Oh, oh, yeah, no. oh, boy, do we have a great Texas story for you then. Dallas Cowboys? Not, no. ne just, Not necessarily. Uh, out of Austin, but involving all of Texas. A very interesting, um, what would you call it, sociological study? Yeah. Just, yeah, wait till you hear this. We'll save it. But hmm. You don't avoid Texas because of the chainsaw massacres? No, I welcome that. Oh. <laughs> my, my theory's always been, like, if I'm at an ATM late at night, I'm like, half of me is like, yeah, yeah, come on, bring it on. <laughs> Six, 65 years of anger and pain. Let's go. There, there won't be anything left of right you, the pal. Other face got nothing on you. I'm not going to stop till I punch the street. Okay? It, it is an interesting choice of states, though. I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre it makes more sense. Mm -hmm. We should be here all day, or it would seem like it. It sounds to, nice. To come up with a state for a situation for each state. Texas, Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, like it would be like Oregon. Uh, yeah. yeah. Circular saw. Coffee no. run? Yeah. Oregon, yeah, yeah, coffee yeah, run. yeah. <laughs> Oregon barista killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Mm. West Virginia, almost have it. I yeah. think that is their slogan. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Or for what's for lovers? Virginia. Virginia. Oh, okay. Virginia gets that a lot. We're Virginia. I was at a not West Virginia. I was at a, a, a so event um, at Christmas time last year. Yes. And there was a there was a it was a big dinner place. And there were a lot of people in there, and there was a guy up by the fireplace playing an acoustic guitar and doing songs. Nice. And he was doing you know regular great stuff, and then he would do a few Christmas songs. When he went into the John Denver song, you know what? It, Almost Heaven, West Virginia, mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah. Everyone in the out of nowhere. And this take, was not. We were in Colorado. Take, they all start, they were all singing. Yeah. Everybody. Road, it was yeah. that's such an amazing tune, and that was co-written by the guy from uh, Afternoon Delight, right? Bill Danoff. Yeah, that's right. From uh, what was it? Uh, what was the name of their band? The Starland Star, Vocal Starland Band. Starland Vocal Band. There you go. Who knew? Okay, I'm sorry. Back to sports. <laughs> you know that uh, Rocky Mountain uh, Take Me Home Country Roads, that's a big uh, it's a, uh, it's a worldwide. Thing, right? Well, yeah. It's, Soccer, it, they sing it all, Soccer, all around yeah. the world. Oh, I thought it was college football, too. No? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. everywhere, yeah. yeah. 
They do the Neil Diamond. St. Louis Blues do it once a Sweet Caroline's oh, everywhere, yeah. too. Yeah, the dot, dot, dot thing. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, people say different things for the dot, dot, dot. Dirty right? stuff. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's gotten dirty now? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. I, I didn't know that. In the clubs. Oh, yeah. that. I'm yes. aware of uh, Mo uh, Moni Moni, the Billy Idol. Yeah, that gets yeah, dirty. Yeah, that, that was great. Mm -hmm. Get drink, get fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You like that, but you didn't like <laughs> the Neil yes, Diamond? kind of the same thing. I don't like the... What I, here's what I don't like about it. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Let me get a pen. All right. They're they're co-opting someone else's thing. What? That was the thing in Boston. Well, it was really a thing in the movie Beautiful Girls, and then Boston started doing it. Oh. <laughs> so the co-op has been co-opted. So who who wrote it in Beautiful Girls? You, I, I'm sorry. Do you know that right away? Or was it Cameron Crowe or somebody? Or uh, That's a Ted Demi movie. Ted Demi. I, yeah. But I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. It's like the for I'll look at another example. This is a big sticking point with you. You don't you don't like new music because every piece of music you've heard has been stolen from. No, that's exactly else. not what I'm talking yeah, about. Exactly. I'm talking about the <laughs> I'm talking about the T-shirt. Keep Austin weird. Yeah. Sure. Keep yeah. Austin, now, now other cities are doing. Now it's everywhere. It is. But yeah. it's, it's not theirs to take. Right. Yeah, have your own thing. Yeah, have your own thing. Yeah, you know, I got Boston, you. you can get the da da da, mm -hmm. and now they're doing it here, and it's just no. Yeah, it's they're, they're genericizing everything. Remember, there was a radio station that uh, took uh, the uh, the Big Apple, and they tried to make it their the that city's apple. Oh, that, really? That was their slogan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that was embarrassing. There's more than one Big Apple. It's uh, us. And we're, uh, remember that? No, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't do your own thing. Virginia's for lovers. You don't want to see Nebraska is for lovers. I'm oh, sure yeah. there's some very fine. Right. Uh, I got laid in uh, Nebraska uh, one time, I tell you. It was, it was all right. <laughs> Cornhold? It was all right. I'd rather not talk about that. <laughs> but it was a good corn the, joke, though. I, I, bought the, yeah. I brought the Miller Light and the grapes, I'll tell you that. Oh, boy. I was oh, glad yeah. to do it. Okay, well, uh, tell me more about Old Dads because uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, right now, streaming on Netflix, you've got a date with your old dad, uh, the new Laugh Out Loud comedy from director and comedian Bill Burr. So you know it's got to be amazing, starring Bill and Bobby Carnavale and Bokeem Woodbine. Two of my fa absolute favorite actors. And we're going to uh, have a little interview we did with Bill Burr in just a few minutes. But tell me more about this movie. Old Dads will have you uh, raving that this is the comedy of the year and probably make you hate anything that happened after 1987 as much as the three old dads do. Or Sound like, familiar? Or like, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason they're buying. Anyway, Old Dads only on uh, Netflix and streaming now. And you know how that works on now. Netflix. Now. Something to do this afternoon or tonight. Check out now. Old Dads with our friend comedian Bill Burr. Right -o. Only on Netflix. So we're going to have our Bill Burr interview coming up. Okay. okay. That, that'll be cool. Yep. Um, also, we have a uh, comedian guest uh, coming up a little bit later on this morning. We'll talk with him. Uh, sh I'm not sure what time that's going to be, but it'll be in an hour or so. Uh, and um, coming up also in the world of news, uh, we have a, um, a finally an Ozzy Osbourne confession about something I've been saying for more than a decade. I feel completely he finally vindicated. Con he finally he confessed it. Yep. Uh, you'll love this, Ace. Uh, oh, but this okay. is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP. And Use big words. I got a little test here. What, what are test doing? are we doing? No, don't do this. What? No, I want you to hand this to Jessica. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, I, I don't want to give too many hints. Why is that still in here? I, I want know. you to figure out what that is, Jessica. Describe, I, I'm put, put it down. And it's got those, it those rubberized bite. rods sticking up. They're about four inches in length and about, yeah. a, I would say, three quarters of an inch in uh, diameter. What do you think those are? Can I'm... you describe the four of them? Go left to right. Well, Actually, go right, to, go right to left. <laughs> Just describe Well, they're limper to stiffer. Oh, well, yeah, this, this, the left little rod is very wiggly. Yes, very. Squishy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> number two gets a wiggly. little bit mm -hmm. firmer. Yeah. Still mm -hmm. wiggly. Number right. three. Again, a little bit more firm. Is that what you normally, do you normally pull it back <laughs> and flick it with I, your... Okay. No, flicker. Then what's the, 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 the last one? That's the last one is just no. straight up hard. Flick it with your finger. <laughs> Ow. And not moving around the box. What, what, what do you think that is? I'm starting to think this represents a penis. You're correct. Yeah. Uh, four of them. The revolution. Or res <laughs> that's if that's if you're going to a doctor and, and you're you have looking for an erectile dysfunction drug. Yeah. Oh. That's what you use to describe the uh, level of uh, flaccidity, if you will. That you currently have. Yeah, if oh. you're going to use big words. I don't think you need to go if you're at four. No. Mm-hmm. 
Can I put, put, take that out of your mouth and put yeah. it down? Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh. I just like playing with number one. It's all uh, wiggly and squishy. Jessica? Yes. Uh, I'll take 10% if I testify <laughs> for you. How's that? It's sort of like a dildo buffet. <laughs> oh, oh. oh uh, ow. Oh. Back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? And my back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See you a... later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. With parents, if you have kids and you have the minivan, make sure there's at least two TV screens in the back of that minivan because, God forbid, your child might be forced to use their imagination for 20 minutes on the way to elementary school in order to keep them busy. I say much better. Every single moment be spoon-fed by the video god that runs their life. Gee, I wonder where ADD comes from. <laughs> I can't possibly imagine. I mean, we kept the boy entertained 24 hours a day his entire childhood in front of a television with a remote control and a game console. All of a sudden, he can't pay attention. <laughs> oh, oh, great Zeus. Why have you done this to our child? Please. Send uh, down some of your pharmaceuticals as uh, which to cure the lad. <laughs> Otherwise, we might be forced to spend time with him, and uh -huh. frankly, he's kind of an idiot. <laughs> and while you're at it, send me something for my fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and myriad of other ailments the medical community has convinced me that I have because as an American, if I don't feel good 24 hours a day, well, there must be a pill I can pop into my face and change my brain chemistry to constantly feel better or maybe and i'm just spitballing here oh great one maybe you're not supposed to feel good all the time maybe it's supposed to be a struggle to get out of bed every once in a while <laughs> and in doing that is how you become a better person when you hurdle that part of your life uh -huh. then you just create this incredible sense of entitlement which is what i complain about the rest of the world having maybe this add thing is kind of overblown maybe it's supposed to be harder to read something than it is to watch it on tv and we have these big fat drug addicted kids that are basically embracing all the worst parts of elvis presley <laughs> We're not doing them any favors. Maybe, maybe, oh great one, the rest of the world isn't the problem. Maybe it's me. Yeah. By the way, that bit is entitled Parenting Advice from a Guy That's Never Had Kids. <laughs> Hold my breath and save the day, Jack is saying. Oh, yeah, life goes on. Long after they set off the nerve gas bomb. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said life goes on. Long after Michelle, Tony, and Egg are gone. Little ditty about Jack Bow was playing. Gonna whisper, then shout some, then whisper again. <laughs> Curtis, where are you? Tell me about Mr. Cooper. Tell me about Mr. Cooper. Get in the chopper now. I said I wanted a cheeseburger. Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Kiwi Rogers is our guest. Kiwi, uh, having just met you, I can um, guess you're obviously an, an athlete. Yeah, I work out a little bit. They have the whole thing where you pump weights and all that stuff. Yeah. You got to have a cardiovascular, man. Mm -hmm. but I was playing basketball the other day. They made me guard the worst dude on the other teams. <laughs> it was a fat dude wearing thongs. Right? You know, <laughs> oh! Standing on the court smoking a cigarette. You know I was a bad <laughs> And you couldn't keep up with I it. I couldn't keep up with it. <laughs> 
<laughs> got involved with that aerobics. Don't like aerobics. Man, that's too much like sex. Yeah. Aerobics? Yeah, you sweat, muscles hurt, and then you got a woman up there telling you you're not doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's strange living back in America, you know. I've, I mean, America's like a foreign country to me in a lot of ways. Why? I, just, I don't know. Things are weird. You know, I have friends that don't eat bread anymore. Everybody's on a low-carb diet. No. And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Right <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. <laughs> Welcome back to America. Bob and Tom 24-7. Not on air, online, all the time. Bob. I know a guy who he's talking about. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hi, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chicky. He's at the I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair with a passion. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and I've got something for Tom. We've created the monster, and here's Tom Griswold. By the way, did we uh, post the uh, the photograph of uh, Pat's new look next to John O'Hurley? Yes. yes. The actor, okay, from, yes, uh, he, he played Jay Peterman on Seinfeld, and he hosts that dog show. And Pat, I think, yeah, that's, that's, that's a compliment. He's uh, a very handsome man. He has lots more hair. And Hurley bought uh, Jay Peterman, I think, or mm -hmm. whatever the name of that place is. Did he? Yeah. Catalog. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Pat, you going to buy anything soon? Uh, maybe a sandwich later today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> get yourself that's one. nice. Uh, See? Now, can you eat sandwiches? I know you're on a very strict new diet. I can eat the middle of the sandwich without okay. the bread, yeah. Just the lettuce? Just the lettuce. Like a BLT, a whole the beef. Base. Yeah. A lot of good yeah. lettuce wraps out there. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. My, do my dogs always want a BLT. Yeah. yeah. They always go hold the L. Mm, yeah. An extra B. <laughs> oh, what a BBG. Dogs. I think my one dog would eat the whole BLT. She is so oral. She loves okay. mouthfeel. Mouth, the, the I, mouth, the eating, I, I have a dog. Many drinking. people have, have a dog that can do the same thing. Um, this dog should work at some kind of a recycling factory. <laughs> you, could, you could put a pill inside roast beef. And somehow she would eat it and then pff, spit out the pill. Mm -hmm. Eat the roast beef. And spit so out to the give pill. her pills, I have to hold her head back and employ gravity and a 90 mile an hour fastball to get it down her throat. Oh. Oh, no. Those dogs are clever. Uh, last night, uh, Thursday night football, Tom, uh, I had this pick. I had the Jags plus two. I, I had that. Yep, I got that. I picked that one right. I hope you, uh, I hope you had it. Travis Etienne <laughs> ran for two touchdowns. And Christian Kirk had a 44-yard touchdown after a short catch over the middle. And the Jaguars beat the uh, New Orleans Saints in New Orleans 31-24. Jags quarterback Trevor Lawrence uh, returned from that sprain knee that forced him out of the final minutes of the win over Indianapolis on Sunday. Now, uh, Jess, you probably aren't aware of this because you weren't here yesterday, but uh, our winner um, from last week's Pigskin Pick'em Oh, uh, was yeah. Mr. Brad Graham. Oh. I'm going to come in here this week and erase that thing. What are you, uh, what are you talking about? Uh, People we, love that. Uh, Brad uh, is a uh, uh, big football fan. He happens to be, uh, um, am I correct in saying he is a uh, Steelers fan? Yes. He's from Erie, Pennsylvania. And um, if he beats Chick in his picks this weekend, I am going to buy him the jersey of his choice. A uh, Terry Bradshaw jersey, I yeah, think. Yeah, I think that's the one. Because he, nice. he, as he said, he has the hairline to play Terry Bradshaw, and his wife has the hair that she can go as Troy Palomalu. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. No, I, uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure she's much more attractive as a woman than Troy would be. Oh, he'd be a damn good-looking woman, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, Troy's uh, a good-looking man. Um, of their four picks, um, they differ on two. Oh. So uh, we'll see what happens. Did he have New Orleans last night? Nope. No, no. He you, had you guys, you guys agreed on that game, and you okay. agreed on the Browns Colts game. You both took the Browns minus three. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and no, Colts he, are an underdog. He has the L.A. Rams. You took Pittsburgh. Uh, he has uh, Denver. You took Green Bay. I told you about last night's football game because, as you might guess, yes, Al Michaels was doing the game last night with my boy Herbie Kirk Herb Street and Al Michaels once again. Work the phrase in. Tom, can you guess? Razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle, baby. And people are losing their minds across the internet. And, Tom, you're not going to believe this, but I have audio proof. Wednesday night on the Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, uh, they had former NFL players 
come on and solve, try to solve the puzzle. Not one puzzle solved. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and Rashad Jennings, I think he's a wide receiver, um, he guessed the puzzle correctly. And uh, as you can see, that's the answer to the puzzle. Oh, no kidding. And here's what it sounded like. Rhyme time is the category. And here we go. Here we go. And this is where they uncover the letters. And, and it's Rashad. Razzle Dazzle. You got it, yes. Oh, immediately. It must have been the Z. <laughs> Razzle Dazzle. Yeah. I bet it was the Razzle Z. Dazzle. Razzle Dazzle. On Wheel of Fortune. Now, we should explain just this started because I used the term Razzle Dazzle on the air several years ago. Mm -hmm. And I said. And was vilified. Nobody attacked. Razzle no one's ever said that. That's a, you're an old man. <laughs> well, so is Al Michaels. So. <laughs> um, you can't appreciate the, 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 the tradition. Thing. Of great broadcasters, really, and of uh, using using a, a am I not a great classic, broadcaster? Classic terms, no. But you're so above them. Oh, that you can, I mean, why would I? I, I what term don't, would don't you? Stoop. I like that very much. What term would you use for a, a play that is low, somewhat I chaotic? Guess. Huh? <laughs> uh, the razzle dazzle, trying to trick, kind of a trick play. Oh hell yeah! What would you what use? What term? Uh, I wouldn't use razzle dazzle. I don't know what I, I would call it. What it is? A flea flicker or uh, or? But uh, you can do razzle dazzle on a punt back. return. No, you can't. Sure you can. Anytime you're razzle, screwing around. No, razzle-dazzle implies a, an end around or a pitch back. No, or, with your limited, apparently, uh, or, viewpoint, uh, you could razzle-dazzle on virtually any play, any sport. What do you call that when they pitch it back <laughs> to the running back and then he throws it down? Pitch back. Oh. No. <laughs> Flea flicker? No. Flea flicker. Flea flicker. Flea flicker. Oh. Flea oh, no, flea flea. Flea. It's flea. definitely flea. It's, 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 it's a flea flicker. You got to hit the L's in it's that, okay? It's not the okay? fa, it's the flick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got they it. were calling it the fun flicker for a while, but yeah. too many, yeah, that was too a many bad, broadcasters got, a problem. got fired. A lot of problems um, with that. So it's nice to see the term razzle dazzle. Maybe it's making a comeback. Well, I certainly hope so. And last night on uh, college <laughs> football, uh, let's see, it was uh, Marshall's thundering herd. Um, and uh, they were playing J James Madison last night, and they took. <laughs> A picture of the crowd, and ESPN was so shook by what they saw that they went to color bars. You know, they went to bars, as you say in the in the business, but they went to color bars. Uh, here is, there's the T-shirt that they caught live on air last night. I, I can't see it from here. During what the it? college football, it says "Game F and Day." <laughs> wow. Okay. Can you see it, Josh? Yes, I can. There? Yes. Yeah. Plain as day, right? Game F and Day, and the F and of course spelled out. Classy. Who's wearing that? Is that a guy? It's a guy in the crowd. Yeah. I was at the state fair and a lady walked by. And I swear to God, it said, don't ask me about my effing T-shirt all spelled out. Mm -hmm. Nice. No need to ask, ma'am. No. Ma'am. First class. You called her wow. ma'am? No, I didn't say any words. But it was a woman wearing it. Yes. Uh, earlier in the season, uh, Pittsburgh and West Virginia were playing each other, and that's a big rivalry. And uh, somebody in the West Virginia fan had eat s pit. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and the last time, one of the last times I went to an NFL game, it was uh, at FedEx Field in uh, Landover, Maryland, and it was uh, Redskins Cowboys at the time. Mm. And a Redskin fan had f the Cowboys <laughs> on a T-shirt. <laughs> Subtle. I, I, I thought the sentiment and the way it was presented absolutely brought a tear to my eye. Oh, yes. <laughs> really? It was beautiful. Yeah. Okay, absolutely well, you're beautiful. going to be very pleased with a new story we have coming up that involves... Dallas? The F word and... Uh, Texas. Uh, Texas. Mm. You'll, you'll they be killed our president, you know. You'll be really surprised. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> 60th anniversary coming up on Sunday, right? And uh, History Channel has a new... Uh, a new documentary coming out. I think November 5th it starts streaming. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, That's that'll what be mean. interesting. Uh, what's coming up in sports? Uh, we've got uh, a man shattering a record. Should do. And a uh, guy who's 107 years old. And oh, uh, wow. a, a married couple who got married a while ago and they're still married, <laughs> which is a world record. No, we'll, we'll find out. And uh, we'll talk about Jim Harbaugh. He uh, might be in trouble with the NCAA. Okay. That'd, that'd be a shame. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> we have a great story about Ozzy Osbourne coming up. You're going to really like this one. Only because of I'm you so can, happy. You can do the I'm Right dance. All right. I can do the I'm Right dance. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us.
Just in case you were wondering, Cool Whip is winning. Uh, cool Whip is winning over Ready Whip on our survey. It's 31 percent. Unbelievable. 31 percent Ready Whip and 69 yeah, percent. <laughs> yeah, nobody else votes. The voting is done. <laughs> <laughs> you see, baby. All right, all right, all right. We understand. We, we understand, understand where everyone's body parts are. Thank you very much. That's Sitting or standing or whatever. You're the yin, I'm all the right. yang. Now take my <laughs> big thing, put it right. All right, we got it. I do like porn, uh, but I'm going to ask you guys a favor. We get a lot of emails sent to the show. You can stop sending me porn clips, okay? I, uh, thanks, but no thanks. I, I appreciate it, but I'll be honest, I want to find my own porn, okay? T-Rex doesn't want to be fed, T-Rex wants to hunt. That's... <laughs> oh, now. Good luck. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> hey, Bob and Tom, it's Donnie Bay. Hey, Thank Donnie. God. <laughs> I don't break yet, so I gotta get off or I'll get in trouble. But Chick, we got you on speaker. The guys here at work are wanting you to do uh, Jody Foster talking about the electric knife. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of knife did you do? use, Doctor Lecter? <laughs> <laughs> Was it an electric knife, Doctor Lecter? I could hear the lambs, Doctor Lecter. This is uh, one of your Thank best you. impressions. I think this this rivals uh, your uh, which one? Your Jimmy Stewart. Oh. And now Jimmy Stewart talks to Jody Foster. Well, uh, uh, what agent? What was her name in that? Starling. Agent. Uh, agent. Agent Starling. Do you see a rabbit? <laughs> uh, I don't, Doctor Stewart. <laughs> and this is now. Been. Can you do? And no. Can and you do her, can you do her doing Nell? Perfect, Doctor Xavier. I can do that. <laughs> chicka pay, chicka pay. Uh, Jody. Get in the car, Jody. Please get in the car. It's not Jody. It's oh yeah. No. See, that's why I couldn't be an actor in a movie. I'd call them by their real names. Clary. Yeah. Cut. Oh, Clarys, will you change my diaper? Oh made God. A, made a boom boom. <laughs> Third and goal. Hit golden. Showers. Tate on a slant that was initially ruled a touchdown with eight seconds left. After review, the play was overturned. As you can see, he's short of the goal line. Uh, no, he's not. And. Yes, he is. He's way short of the goal line. He's like half. He's like an entire ball short of the goal line. The football, Tom. Uh, so that, with eight seconds left, they had to stop play. Look at the re review that. But then, due to a rule that causes a ten-second runoff when a clock is stopped by officials and then restarted, the game ended. What? With what? eight seconds left. What's the point so of that rule? Did another play? In theory, the Lions could have lined up with a fourth down play as time expired, but the initial call of a touchdown is actually what disallowed. That possibility. God. Why? The rule exists because the rules committee led by John Shula, <laughs> the only curves on he wheels in, sons of bitches. I hate all you young mother. Advil, Sudafed, and Cheeto dust. I fit the crown royal and a couple of beers. Unpaid bills and a summons to appear. <laughs> the scariest thing you've ever seen is a divorce guy with no candy, no girlfriend, no job, no pants, no idea. It's Halloween. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom Radio 24-7. Yes, it's time now for another exciting episode. Oh, no. Of, of Murray Whiskey. Frontier Funeral Director. Oh, no. My hero. In this episode, 
Murray Whiskey has just gotten married. Hmm. And he brings his beautiful new wife to their honeymoon room, their suite. Mm-hmm. They're getting undressed on their wedding night there. Murray Whiskey drops his trousers, throws them over to his new little bride. Just put those on. She looks at him incredulously. He says, go ahead, put them on. She puts on the trousers. She says, they're too big. I, I can't wear these. Mary Whiskey says, that's right. Remember that. I wear the pants in this family. Don't you ever forget that. She says, fine. She takes off her panties. She throws them over to Mary Whiskey. She says, you put those on. He tries. She says, you made me do it. You've got to do it. He says, okay. So he tries to get them on. Can't do it. He says, I can't even get these past my thighs. He says, I can't get into these panties. He says, yeah, and until you change your attitude, you're not going to either, partner. <laughs> A true tale from the Old West. That concludes another exciting episode. Uh, Murray, Murray Whiskey. Murray Whiskey. <laughs> Fred Fred Frontier pyromaniac idiot. over here. What are you, <laughs> you're lighting up the studio, Yeah, Bob? this thing, it's not working. I'm sorry. Nothing. Uh, just... Brought to you by that new Japanese-Jewish restaurant, so sue me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Maria. Hi, this is Mike Birbiglia, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. I got thrown out of J.C. Penny the other day. <laughs> really? Yeah, fondling up the mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> Believe that? And that ain't my fault. Have you seen the mannequins in there? Uh -huh. <laughs> and they taunt you, too. They got the little short skirt on, arm up, kind of waving you over. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shoot. I tell you what, if you ask me, the little whore was asking for it. Essential Morning Radio. All day and all night. Really? No, seriously. Really? But dot com. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. That's Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, Chick. He'll be performing. <laughs> There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Thank you, Chick. And Steven Singer Jewelers is proving how worthless lab-grown diamonds are by giving away a free one-carat lab diamond with every engagement ring purchase while supplies last purchase is necessary. Visit IHateStevenSinger.com for more details. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Now, we were talking about um, our friend comedian Bill Burr and his movie Old Dads, which is streaming as we speak on Netflix. And uh, you can watch that, baby. And what's it about? Well, it's about uh, being an old dad, which uh, Bill became a father at a semi-advanced age. I'm quite oh. familiar with that. Oh, really? And um, it's uh, got Bobby Cannavale and, um, and Bo Keem Woodbine in it. And it's, uh, like I said, streaming right now on Netflix. We had an opportunity to talk to uh, Bill not too long ago. I thought we would uh, share some of that uh, conversation with you. And here it is. Our guest is comedian Bill Burr. Um, I know that you are an amateur drummer. How's that going? Yeah, I'm a dad, a dad drummer. That's what I like to call myself. I'm a dad who drums in the garage whenever he can get like 10 minutes. I'll go out there <laughs> and I'll play like Guns N' Roses or Zeppelin, all that metal stuff. I mean, you know, you're currently going with the Lex Luthor with a beard look. Um, uh, well, I mean, it's not by choice. Nature decided my haircut. <laughs> <laughs> my jeans did. Hey, I got a, I got a good one on my name, right? My daughter, she's five, said to me the other day, she goes, uh, she goes, Dad, I know what your real name is. And I go, what? She goes, Bill. <laughs> and I go, I go, how do you know that? She goes, because Mommy calls you that. And I go, all right. I go, you know what my, my real, like, full name is? And she goes, what? I go, my real full name is William Frederick Burr. And she goes, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bill Burr. And I go, why is that ridiculous? She goes, that's a ridiculous name. <laughs> there you go, a little bit of Bill Burr. We'll, we'll hear some more from Bill Burr coming up. Once again, Bill's movie, Old Dads. It's out there right now on Netflix, just released. And uh, have some fun, uh, even if you're a young dad or a young mom or an old mom, whatever you're into. <laughs> Check it out. Now, uh, we return to the sports page. Well, a lot of activities in the world of sports. Uh, I'm taking you to Montana for this sports story, Tom. Okay. Are you ready? The gentleman's name is Rudy Norlander, and he's lucky to be alive after being mauled by a grizzly bear in Montana. Oh. 
and his survival has led him to be even more invested in one of college football's most historic and passionate rivalries. Uh, Norlander, 61, was attacked by a grizzly back on September 8th in an area just north of Big Sky, Montana. He was helping two hunters who rented an ATV from his business near Yellowstone National Park look for a deer they'd shot. And the bear came out of nowhere. And because of how quick it happened, Norlander was unable to deploy his bear spray and his gun misfired. Mm. Oh. He tried to punch the animal in hopes of <laughs> slowing it down. Yeah. His efforts were ineffective. After the first punch, the grizzly on top of Rudy it left a large scratch down his right chest, bit his arms, legs, and to top it all off... <sighs> Gave him as what Rudy himself describes as the most disgusting French kiss of his life oh. uh. <laughs> before biting down and tearing off his lower jaw. Oh, my gosh. Norlander survived after being transported to the University of Utah, a 10-hour operation, and now he's fine. He's ready to return home, but he is very invested in Montana and Montana State. Wow. They're the Grizzlies. <laughs> And he's cheering for uh, Montana. Although Norlander didn't take questions about the attack itself. He well, he couldn't answer him without a lower jaw. <laughs> true, true enough. <laughs> if all it goes according to plan, <laughs> you can't wait to attend next month's football game between Montana and Montana State. Garcim. First play is at night. <laughs> uh, Norlander uh -oh. is a good show to be in. Norlander, no, calm down. Calm down. <laughs> What'd you call? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Norlander's a fa uh, fan of Montana State. He hates the University of Montana because, yes, they are oh, the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies. I bet. Mm. Okay. God, what a story. That's yeah. awful and uh, amazing that he survived. Yeah, t tore off his bottom sure. jaw. Oh, boy. You ever ridden a jaw, Tom? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> is this, uh, is this some uh, deviant sexual activity huh? that you Not participate in? Uh, deviant. Involving a trapeze and a plug that is inserted in <laughs> some orifice. No, no, no plug. No trapeze. It makes people, it makes people happy. Very happy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Tom, this also for you. You can uh, soon own Mickey Mantle's Childhood Home. Really? For only $7. What? Well, at least part of it. <laughs> Investment platform uh, will make 47,000 shares available at $7 each starting October 27th. They're doing this with real estate now? This to, is interesting. Uh, to us, this is one of the pieces that really trace back in the history of Mickey Mantle, the start of his career. Is this in Oklahoma? Says, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the genesis of modern baseball. He was one of the first superstars larger than life. It's well known Mantle's father wanted his son to be a professional baseball player even before he was born. And the home has the physical evidence of the 20 time All Star learning to play. So is this going to be a museum or something? 319 South Quincy Street in Commerce, Oklahoma. Uh, the Yankees legend, uh, Mantle passed away in 1995. Uh, a lot of it is untouched. A lot of mystique about it, but they're going to. Uh, seven seven dollars a share, forty seven thousand shares in the house, Tom. If you'd okay. like to do them, that's interesting. I find that very interesting. Uh, how could they? I, 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 don't know I how would they assume that, that they'll and have they're a going to caretaker and turn it into a museum of or something. I would think, or or maybe well, and if if it's one of these things, they should sell to the whoever the highest bidder, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, and then their shareholders get a, yeah, you a, can a buy tasty more, profit. Yeah, you can oh, buy no, more this than isn't, one this, share. They're not going to resell it, are they? Of course. That's the whole um, point of it, buying one of these shares. Yeah, you, it's, uh, you're speculating. You right. Know, oh, investment. I thought it was to preserve it. Why would you? Oh, I see what you're saying. You get a piece of it and yeah. you own it. Well. You get, you get what, a dollar of the admission? No, no. So, just, hey, I own a. Uh, well, just a, out of respect for Mickey Mantle and what he did in the world of baseball. Well, I you, think somebody's going to buy 40,000 shares. That's the, the idea. Out yeah, of the okay. 47,000. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you mad now? <laughs> What's to preserve it? I mean, he didn't do anything there but live as a child. You know what? It, it's not like he... You know, but they do that to a lot of people. <laughs> and kind of unnecessarily. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not, I certainly, if I were passing through Commerce, Oklahoma, I probably would rather go to the Chick-fil-A and get lunch than would go rather... see the place. But <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. There's the problem with turning it into a museum instead of an investment opportunity. Yeah. Well, okay, I don't see it as an investment. I wouldn't invest in it, so 
whatever. Someone's going to make money. It's real estate. Like the chicks, you buy a thousand shares, so you have seven thousand dollars in the deal. They sell the house, you end up getting a twelve thousand dollar return. That's Absolutely. nice. Absolutely, that's a nice. Well, chunk someone, of someone, someone, someone buy it right now. And interest rates are good and high, and <laughs> good luck to you. Okay. You know, I never thought he'd be irritated by that story. I never, I never thought. And therein lies the adventure of this show. <laughs> it sure is. You never know. I was just. Re I was just. He's going to get I was just at. reading about Mickey Mantle yesterday. Yeah, what was... What, uh, who uh, cares? Next. The, 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 <laughs> essence, uh, the essence of it was that he was one of the most gifted natural athletes of all time, and had he not pissed away... Uh, uh, Groundbreaking uh, article. Drinking so much booze, <laughs> he'd probably be a... It would have been a much better... The famous story where he hit the home run, and he was so incredibly hungover, and the guy said, how'd you do it? He, he goes, well, I could see three balls coming at me. I aimed for the middle one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and didn't Jim Bouton, uh, you know, sing like a sing like a bird about Mickey and stuff? He, he talked did. about Mickey on the roof Ratted, with some yeah. binoculars. Yeah. yeah, I bet Mickey didn't speak to Jim Bouton for they, a while. They, uh, they patched I, it up I before Jim didn't. and Mickey died. Yes, they did. I bet they, I, you well, don't patch up stuff like that. Uh, according to the book, they did. I, Jim well, Bouton's book. Yes. Yeah, according to One Jim's view. Jim said, hey, we're, we're fine, I think. We're yeah. fine. He said everything's fine. Mickey Mantle said, oh, well, I... that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they had issues for a while there. I'll bury him underneath my home in Commerce. <laughs> That's what I'll do. Uh, more sports coming up, including the, uh, the world records and uh, the Rams' Sean McVay is having a baby. Oh, congrats to the McVays. And he don't care. If he's he's not gonna be at the he's not gonna be available this weekend. He's coaching and he doesn't care. He says his son or daughter knows better. They're not gonna be bored at game time. That's funny. That's what he says. You know what Mickey Mantle could have used at his house, Jess Hooker? What? A kegerator. And I see one right there. I don't Ooh. think he needed anything to help. Get the alcohol you're not faster helping. You're, into you're, you're, not, you're not really okay. helping. I think the idea for, is to right. give me a yes and. Mm -hmm. Pancreatitis. Well, that's a great idea, Look Tom. Up, uh. You know, the kegerator that's over there by Ace uh, can be won by you. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest. Thank you, Orange Insoles, that's right. for the kegerator. And uh, just find out those details, bobandtom.com slash contest. Also, get in on our pigskin pick them. You could be like Brad Graham and win yourself a beautiful big green egg mini max. What are you going to be doing this afternoon, Chick? Well, I'm going to be, uh, maybe I'll uh, steal that kegerator for the weekend and take it home to my compound where I'm safe and secure with the Simply Safe Design It Yourself, Do It Yourself home security system. It's still October, but the holidays are coming at you fast like a giant slimy monster that you're related to here they come the holidays tom and that means you need to start protecting your home because you know that ant of yours steals that's why you need a camera in every room and you can get a brand new system at simply safe uh for 40 percent off experts love simply safe oh yes it was named the best home security system of 2023 by u.s news and world report and simply safe comprehensive protection for the whole home advanced sensors that detect break-ins fires floods and more plus high definition cameras both inside and out powered by 24 7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day half the cost of traditional home security and with the new 24 7 live guard protection and the smart alarm wireless indoor camera monitoring agents can see and speak to intruders helping stop crime in real time, a powerful technology exclusively from Simply Safe. And they're Simply Safe's backed by money back guarantee. Try Simply Safe for 60 days risk free. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. And for a limited time, you can save 40% off any new system with a fast protect plan. Visit simplysafetom.com today. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Fun fact. Yes. If you're visiting uh, Mickey Mantle's house, do you know what else you can go visit? The grave of Mr. Ed. <laughs> the horse. Is that right? Yeah, he's, the horse. <laughs> yeah, he's, bur he's buried. I, I don't, is, it, is it pronounced Tahlequah, Oklahoma? I don't know. That's where Mr. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Know. Ed, uh, Bamboo Harvester. Mr. Ed's real name. Well, the, great, was, the great horse, Mr. That was Ed. The, that was his, uh, Mr. Really? Ed's name. Yeah. Although I would imagine it got to a point everyone called him Ed. Sure. sure. Right. Yeah, to me, <laughs> one of the greatest shows of all time. Shakespeare loved it, you know.
Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think that could have been. <laughs> That's what Banquo's ghost told me. With my mother the car, <laughs> one of the worst television. Right, no, right my mother the scheduled. car notoriously stunk. Mr. Ed was brilliant. Nah, there's, a, there's a whole psychological thing I going. Why know. he only he only talked to Wilbur? Oh, why Wilbur had this super hot wife he never touched? Essentially, I mean, the diary of a psychopath. <laughs> there's all kinds of really good stuff <laughs> happening there. Uh, we are coming back with interesting things in sports. Oh yeah. We have in, the word impaled in the news. Oh, no. <laughs> and we have, uh, we've got an interesting story about Scotch and a great story about Texas. You're going to like it. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Larry. Your earliest impressions were, of course, of your teachers at school. Uh, yeah, so I used to do. Uh, yeah, can, can you like, do like Mr. Halinak for us or whatever? Uh, it was Mr. Christensen was the... Uh, he was the uh, G, well, a U.S. history teacher, mm -hmm. and I knew nothing. He'd always send me to the map because he knew I knew nothing about any of it. He'd, We're going to go to our uh, resident map expert, Mr. Caliendo. Can you show us where the United States is? <laughs> <laughs> I'd point to blue. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Caliendo. Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> he was also the basketball coach, so I just do him. To, We're going to shoot free throws. We're going to run laps. We're going to shoot more free throws. Free throws. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Caliendo. <laughs> what was the first one you did that worked? An impression yeah. or like a cat like a famous actor or uh, uh i mean it was muppets guy. it was muppets yeah. first as you could tell by the incredible miss pig yes I lay did i lay down you earlier <laughs> um, <laughs> amazing <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I would watch In Living Color. I would watch, uh, you know, the, the these are things I couldn't really use in my act because they were people's characters from sketches, but like the Damon Wayans uh, bum character that... <laughs> my name is Anton. I'm a victim of society. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> yeah. He'd have the pickle in the yes, car. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you, can, can you sing you a song? Can you do Fire Marshal Bill? Uh, let me show you something. <laughs> I'd say there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, because that. that was like people doing the character. So you could, so you could jump on and do those characters, which is what a lot of people do that with impressions now. They just watch other people. I've heard Kevin Pollack. I don't know if I, I, I Kevin Pollack might have been the first person to say this, but I see the same thing he does. Is people unlock an impression, and then once it's unlocked, everybody can do it. So you watch the person who's figured it out, and it really has to do with cadence. Um, with, uh, with I've talked about this before, but with Barack Obama, he would talk uh, slow at the beginning and speed up at the end. So you could always think, <laughs> how many uh, uh, William Shatner, have you heard? How many, uh, a high Christopher Walken low in the middle? You know who it is because they all ignore punctuation. You know, it's, So it's well, if you can get the cadence down, you don't even have to have the, the pitch. So... Um, it's, I, I'm probably not answering the question anymore, but it, it, Muppets were the first thing I did, some cartoon kind of characters and stuff like that. Stuff I wouldn't even consider really impressions, but... What's the hardest, uh, who's the hardest one to write for? Um... Because sometimes if you have the voice, there's some impressions, you see them and you go, boy, that's dead on, and you go, but there's okay, no Okay, I've, I've had a Billy Crystal forever. But I had no idea what I would even do with it. It's one of those voices that just, he doesn't do much. Yeah. Sully, and, you know. Yeah. Hey, Man, let's so go. Good. Come on, guys. We're going to go over here. It's just one of those things. <laughs> um, but here it works. And uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s one that, uh, I'm sure I've done that too for you, but it's the, he's the human Twitter feed. Uh, he talks in little phrases and everything's about himself. He could be giving out an Academy Award, which is supposed to be about the nominees. But it would turn it back to him like, these people deserve your applause <laughs> almost as much as I do. <laughs> Hashtag awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, do me a favor. You're doing great right now for you. You know, that's, <laughs> that's he's just, he can just, he can insult you and be positive, <laughs> backhanded compliment for everything. Chick, you do a great job sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank Why don't you, you do me a favor and text yourself? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. Chick McGee here from the Bob and Tom Show. I want to tell you about the NFL season coming up. We got together with the folks at Big Green Egg, and each and every week, you're going to have a chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg during the Pigskin Pick'em. Eat Meal Kit. You can try delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving or if you need an extra boost to help support your wellness goals why not try protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving this september get factor 
and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash bobandtom50 and use the code bobandtom50 to get 50% off. The code bobandtom50 at factormeals.com slash bobandtom50 to get 50% off. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. One time, my friends and I were underage drinking outside of a bowling alley. We went in and bowled a few frames, came back out, and the police were standing by, and they said, we noticed uh, there's some beer in, in, in the car here. Whose car is this? I was like, it's mine. He goes, yeah, what's with the beer? And I go, we were trying to find out the same thing. I, we, we were bowling, came out, and we found some beer in here, and I, I, we, we were like, well, who the hell left this? And my buddy looked at me and goes, come on, Arnold. <laughs> Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom 24-7. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> Comedian Roger Naylor is our guest <laughs> from the Ohio Valley. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember. Is your wife a cop? Yeah, it's not the traditional uh, job like we were uh, talking about. I mean, it is very, you know, very romantic. We met at a uh, Dunkin' Donuts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hi. There's Josh Arnold. Chick, how are you, man? I am well. Good. There's Good. Ace Cosby. Hey. I am Chick McGee, and here's, here's our friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Hey, hi. Uh, how it's, you it's doing? Good seeing you. All right. Um, we have a lot to get to today, so let's not uh, dilly or dally. Uh, what have you got over there? Uh, dear Bob and Tom, Chick, you said yesterday you wished Bend, Oregon would just stop messing around and change their name to Bend Over, Yes, Oregon. it was a, a brilliant. This is from Brian. I did a little research, and near Richmond, Virginia, there is a historical district called Bend Over. Unfortunately, Brian says, when you Google something like that, Oh, you also learn Ben Dover is a British porn star. There you go. Uh, and by the way, going by First Pet and Street I grew up on, for my porn name, I would be Whiskers Brunel. Oh, oh that's good. That's pretty good. That's very good. Thank you. That's now, is that for your Brian. porn name or your stripper name? That's the porn name. Okay, your porn name is what again? The street you grew What is it? The street you grew up. Uh, my First Pet... That's the first name. Okay. And the street you grew up on. So I'd be Duffy Duffield. Duffy Duffield. Oh, okay. What would you be, Josh? Spats Trails. That's all right. <laughs> Seems like a specific genre there. Yeah. Yeah, outdoor, outdoor foot fetishist. <laughs> all right. What would you be, Jess Hooker? Uh, mine would be the worst one. It does not work at all. It would be D.O.G. Southway. Ah. <laughs> We had a dog named D.O.G. when D we were kids. D.O.G.? D.O.G. D.O.G. Oh, God. Really? It's cute. Yeah. It's really cute. It's yeah. cute as the day is long. A Chinese Sharpay. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. one of those things. Mm -hmm. And you thought it was a vaguely uh, uh, Asian D.O.G.? Sure. Yeah. Well, oh, that's, I see. It sounds... Oh, I don't think my mother was that clever. I just think she liked the name. D.O.G. Yeah. sounds kind of Japanese, actually. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Or, or something scientific or, or, or computer-wise. That's possible. Oh, I got, oh, the, I got, yeah. the, I got the DOG 6000 on my iPhone 15. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, I'm still dealing with a 4000. Uh, yeah. um, Ace? Is it pet name first or street? Pet, pet name. Pet name. Missy 62nd. Missy like 62nd. 62nd. So was it a, a street? Yeah. Wait, the, the, the one right here? Missy Street. The one better. right here? There you no. go. Missy. There's another 62nd? No, in California. What do you mean? Yeah. Lots of six seconds. <laughs> they number the streets everywhere. What are you talking about, you lunatic? No, so if somebody says, yeah, I live off 42nd, you, you're, you're what? on Broadway? You're on, you're on the... Wow. <laughs> Ooh. 
You live in New York Fifth and 42nd. Oh, that's a hell of a place. I was going to say, if it's the 60 seconds between right over here, you can't get there. They've had it blocked for a year. Sure? They're Do trying you know to close every just, business. You know what you've just um, proven? You are living right here in your head. <laughs> and here and you, now, that's the way to go. You don't have in anything the, else I'm going in the on. moment. And no, Ace was born relates, in California. It all relates to you. You were born in California? Yeah. I didn't know that. Remember the hospital? What's the hospital? Cedar. 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 Made out of cedar, huh? That's nice. weird. No. Smells good. Like, Smells uh, good. Like <laughs> Abe Lincoln was born in a cedar. <laughs> cedar cyanide. Um, cyanide. <laughs> I've That's been there. Poisonous. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Back to sports. Uh, boots. Thanks for asking. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. It? I have your, one too. Thanks for. Asking. Was your dog or cat named Boots? That's my cat named Boots. My mother liked cats. Uh, oh. well, what's the street? Uh, Oak. Boots, boots Oak. Oak. Boots yeah. Oak. No, it doesn't work. That nah, doesn't work. Uh, Pat. Uh, Puccini Oak. My dad loved the opera. <laughs> Puccini. He named Oak. a pet uh, Puccini. Puccini. Yeah. Our first pet. Uh, what was it, a dog or a cat? It was a German Shepherd, believe it or not. Oh, nice. Yeah. That'd be kind a of German cute. Shepherd named Puccini. That's mm -hmm. odd. <laughs> but oh, wow. it have, with a, wouldn't he go with a German opera, wouldn't you think? Uh, uh, a lot of great German operas out there. Yeah. That's my dad. He's a wacko. Uh, uh, my dog, Cosi Fan Toot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> a little pretentious. I almost want to get another dog to name it. Cos <laughs> what is it? Cosi Fan Toot? Yeah, it's a uh, opera, whatever. <laughs> uh, hey, uh... What was I going to ask you, Pat? Uh, no, I better, I better not. Never you can mind. ask me anything. No, no, never mind. Do you no. think there are snobs out there that do that? Uh, uh, the, the, the porno, the adult film name is your the name of your first horse yeah, and yeah, your right. fave, and the opera your parents first took you to. No, no, uh, your, yes. your, your, fir your first horse and the name of the street of the first home you owned in Florida. <laughs> Go ahead. Take your time. I know there have been many. It's the first. Sanibel Salt Lick. Uh, uh, well, if it was Opry, it would, of course it would be. Yeah. Long Main Deflator Mouse <laughs> is the name of my porno name. That's it's a great porno name. Yeah. Long Main. Deflator Mouse. Um, Amadeus Boynton Beach. Would be, no, not would the town, be not the town, oh, the street. No, I, but I like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, yes. Um, no, if you, Pooch is Puccini's great, great name for a dog. You call it Poochie? Yeah, Poochie. Poochie yeah. is short. Oh, you, yeah. you call the doggy Poochie? 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 Yeah, my dad would do that occasionally. Was yeah. Poochie a boy dog or a girl dog? It was a boy dog, believe it or and not. And your your father was uh, <laughs> in the uh, theater. Very active in the theater. Very I'm surprised active. he liked Poochie. <laughs> talk, talk like <laughs> oh, that sweet sweet Poochie's not for me. Talk like that. You know, my favorite story about your dad, though, he you was never a... suspected. Never mind. Go ahead, Tom. <laughs> I mean, you're. Your dad was a, a very fine theatrical yes. director. Talk like Richard Batten all the time. <laughs> Where have you been, boy? And how, you, many, uh, uh, how many scarves did he own? At least one. I know, uh, like a purple one. Oh. <laughs> he Do you wore have it that? to weddings. Scarf. Do you have that? He wore it to weddings. Did, did he wear like an ascot? Yeah, and he wore like purple bell bottoms to one wedding. I have arrived. <laughs> I'm here. Was your dad a hippie? I don't know what he was. was he, he one of those like, Was he one of those like Hugh yeah, Hefner? Yeah. Uh, Very much so. Uh, like a portly Hugh Hefner. Tom, <laughs> I sure would have loved him. Very Me flamboyant, too. purple scarves, active in the theater. Absolutely. Well, Come lucky on. you're here. Six, six kids. <laughs> Wonder who's seen I'm the oldest use. of six. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, we all look like him. <laughs> Tell what we came from. Uh, tied, I, I, a, tied a toothbrush to it one night and got it to work for a lady. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know they used it. Did, <laughs> no one talked about that back then. In utero. <laughs> that far back. Wow. <laughs> no, I love your story about your dad and the, and the Shakespeare. You know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, would take. Uh, he would take me to the Stratford Festival up in Canada. And I guess I was precocious at 11 and we were driving up. I hate up. this joke. I was <laughs> driving up and I said... Uh, <laughs> I said, Dad, did Romeo and Juliet, Juliet sleep together? He says, well, in the Chicago company, they did. <laughs> oh, that's so great. <laughs> Chick, do you at least like, Pat's dad would say. Uh, I like the way your dad talked, that's for sure. When he was directing uh, a group of men and he wanted them. I need you to be more masculine. Uh, the chorus, more masculine men. Balls, props, balls. <laughs> it would, it'd do it with balls. And then he would yell, props. <laughs> Pat, you have got to start writing this thing yeah. down. <laughs> that is so great. Great. God, did you have uh, did, in uh, holidays and things? Did your father bring home like Uncle uh, Steve or anything uh, like that? We had various theater people around all the time. We had these two women that would come by, Sylvia and Tony, and I never knew what was up with Sylvia and Tony until I got older. Okay. Oh, okay. it was all kinds of people. It was it was fantastic. Well, what lot was of, up uh, with them? Yeah. Well, oh, they were together. They were oh. partners. Those yeah. were different times. Mm -hmm. I we had a, a couple down the 
road that were uh, quote unquote sisters mm-hmm. till they weren't. No kid, but you guys, did you think they were sisters? Yeah, Whoa. Well, they're, they're they're great people. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, of course. Yeah. In those, yeah. in those, in those just, days, that's the way it was. Just, you yeah. just assumed. Yeah. yeah, it was just one of those. Things. They were just friends. Well, yeah. And didn't your mother teach phys ed? I mean, come on. Yes, my mother taught phys ed. And an amazing athlete, right? My mother was a very good athlete. Yes. Yeah. yeah, my mom's the one who played catch with me, not my dad. Huh. No, your dad was playing catch with <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Josh. Uh, 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 I'm a bottom. <laughs> he was what bottom was in Shakespeare. What was your dad's uh, first name? Uh, Joseph uh, Gerald. He went by Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. Pat will do all of this, but he won't go to that last step. Oh, no, no, that never happened. There's no way. That well, I always not. got the impression your dad was more of a, he was like, the straight guy in the theater, and so mm-hmm. he was like the ladies' man in a, in a way. Yeah, he uh, yeah, he got all the side he, action. He dilly dallied with the people he should, probably shouldn't have. <laughs> okay, I, okay. Had he been gay, I think it would have made him even cooler. That's uh, he I was had. pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I'm here. And your dad went to the opera every week, right? Every Monday by himself, one ticket to uh-huh. the Metropolitan Opera. No, did, he, did he ever take you? <laughs> he did uh, to one. Which one? La Boheme. Ah, yeah. I go and by myself because I'm orally pleased in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> you understand, been that cowboy? <laughs> you understand, boy? <laughs> you can't be there. It'll throw me off. Steve will get mad. <laughs> Did you um, uh, enjoy the opera? Uh, I couldn't believe how good it was. Yeah, it was amazing. The production was... I mean, they had animals on stage, and it was incredible. You know how they made those animals do whatever they wanted? <laughs> Prods? Oh God. No, Prods. They, uh, when the animals misbehaved they beat them Ooh. and then when they did what they wanted they stopped the beatings so you see really yeah at the opera house huh uh-huh. oh boy they were <laughs> savages <laughs> that had to be really rough backstage no it, that's where my dad's ashes are at the Met. elephant crap everywhere they are yeah one sixth of them yeah i have uh, the other one si- who measured them uh, my my stepmother. Did you with a cup or <laughs> did you, I have mine in a cup? Did, did you, you think she was making biscuits? Or I don't know. What she did was you doing. just distribute them on the floor there? Or? Uh, my brother did. My brother James did. Yeah. Wow. On the stage, he got yeah. in trouble too. It's and highly James, illegal. They, they well, caught it was in the middle of a performance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't just go willy nilly spreading ashes. Oh, no. oh they permission. do it at a lot of stadiums all the time. Sure, they, they catch do. Hey, why are the three tenors coughing so much? <laughs> How did he get up to the stage? I don't know. I mean, my, he's all over New York, so. Did Maybe they, he tore it. You can tore it. Did yeah. they? Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. I, 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 we need to move back to the sports yeah, page. Your I'm brother's, so sorry. Uh, your brother's very active in the uh, theater as well. Yes, he is. He's in the arts. Mm. Mm. Does some painting. Oh, he does. He's a painter. Dancing, choreography, oh. ballet. <laughs> ballet, mostly. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we've established everyone's porn name. Is that uh, correct? Yeah. Think- Stupid world record. A uh, man from my vacation spot, Cyprus, has broken the Guinness World Record for or the most wine glances, uh, the most wine glasses balanced on his head yet. Professional busboy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished with that, ma'am? He's stacking it on top of his head. No, no. Uh, professional glass dancer. Glass dancer. Mm. Uh, is that a major at any school? Aristoteles Valoridis has shattered the previous record. By the way, you have that, Josh. I didn't know how to tell you. I, okay. I, Arist- that's what that is? Aristoteles, the, uh, the, the lesions. and This is crazy. I thought it was eczema. Pus. <laughs> A previous record of 270 wine glasses balanced on his. That's the old record. The new record is 319 wine glasses balanced on his head. Well, I've got to see this. Here, it looks like a, imagine, it looks How like a wedding cake. It's, it's trays. Oh, okay. It's trays of oh, glasses. They have trays in between the glasses? Yeah, but it's it's stacked up. It's got to be three or four feet high. And it's, <laughs> he's got it on his head, and he's walking around. Counterfeit. Uh, it's And there's no, by the way, there's no wine in the glasses. So he's busting the table after the drinks of all that. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, uh, fun, pointless, it's everything we love. <laughs> you. Uh, to break the record, nine trays of glasses were stacked on top of one another that the 62-year-old Aristoteles uh, then placed on top of his head. Not only did he balance them for over double the minimum time required, 10 seconds, but he also moved around and gently danced yeah. before the glasses eventually came toppling down. The total weight of the glasses was 66 pounds, and of course, several of the 
uh, onlookers were cut by some of them. Oh, <laughs> many, many oh, lacerations. Yeah, it was, it was uh, uh, Gerald Godwin, uh, your thoughts on glass dancing? I like it. In, I, love, I like to choreograph. <laughs> 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 you so caught me off guard. I was looking at a song. <laughs> he was thinking, I'm sorry, Pat. I, I, I can't pronounce it today. <laughs> Pat was busy drunk. actually working. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> it, it's worth seeing a picture of this glass thing. It's pretty, dancing. It's pretty amazing. What the hell is glass? Don't you remember the movie Glass Dance? She was dancing around, and then she sat on a chair, pulled a rope, and a bunch of shards of glass fell off. Oh, what a feeling. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> glass Dance. It was remember an awful time? film, really. <laughs> was flash dancing? That wasn't really a thing. They just invented that for the movie, right? Mm. I've honestly never seen flash dance. I only know that scene. You don't think yeah. there were part time strippers? I think that's what she was a uh, worked at a. She was a welder. She was a welder, and she worked as a stripper at night. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's not just a dancer. She's a, she's stripping. Did she? Strip? I don't think I she was, was a stripper. Strip. Pretty sure it's a wow. Strip. No, she was just a dancer. Yeah. She, no, it's like uh, right in the middle of her dances. No, I think she like <laughs> it's <sh> beaver time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, that's real cool with the water in the bucket and everything, but beaver time. <laughs> Let's see that. <laughs> Do you remember in Forrest Gump, Tom, the, <laughs> uh, uh, Jenny is up there. She's, like, trying to, you know, uh, oh, she's yeah. playing uh, the guitar naked. naked. Oh, right. yeah. Right. And there are, this, there are these rowdy men in the front row. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and one of them yells out, get her a harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> I was the, and it's sad in the scene, right. but I was the only person in the crowded theater that laughed out loud oh, to get her. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Did you ever hear a Sherry Lewis tribute? Uh, you mean clam the, chop thing? the puppeteer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Clam Why? chop. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, a very uh, unusual ventriloquist act. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's a heck of a skill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, remember that? <laughs> I remember Senior Wences. I always wonder what Senior Wences would be like in bed. You know who Senior Wences is? Jim? I do not. It's, uh, he was the famous gate of the little box, and he'd li there'd be a head, and he'd lift it up and go, all right. She might not remember that. He would draw a face on his hand. And I remember would, that. Hello, I know hello. that guy, yeah. yeah. Hello. Senior Wences. He lived to be like 100. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, right? Remember that? But, you know, he was, but he, he, was, he was always, you know, kind of a, you know, throw, the throwing your voice thing. Right. But it, it, he had, like I said, he had a box with a head in it. He'd lift it up, and I was in, going in there. It's all right. It's very funny. Okay. <laughs> hell of an act you got there. I always wonder, can you imagine going to the wake for that guy? Oh. Walk up to the casket, lift up the lip. It's all right. <laughs> uh, it's not all right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we have a cool story about Texas. Very exciting. That's what you're telling me. Oh, uh, you're going to like it, Chick. All right. I think you're, you're going to like it. All right. We have um, a nun in the news. Nuns on the run. Yeah, kind of Love a sports it. story, really. <laughs> That's um, true. Uh, in, a, in a weird sort of way. Oh, um, and then um, we have uh, my favorite cereal in the news, shredded wheat. <laughs> <laughs> he said it so, proud, so proudly. Everybody listening, of course he'd like shredded wheat. <laughs> yes, yes. Of course. Mm -hmm. I like to mix it with grape nuts. <laughs> That's a good conservative. Did you, did you know that on the space, I'll tell you this, Jess, since okay. they're not listening. Right. On the space shuttle, you know how they got the tiles to stick? They <laughs> ate bowls of grape nuts, and then they poured it, and they stuck the... Yeah, yeah nobody rinsed the bowl. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to congratulate Brad Graham, winner of week six. We uh, call him the s'more. Uh, and he, we have a little bet with uh, Brad. He won the uh, Big Green Egg Mini Max. And you can win, too. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest. Get your entries in for this week's win. By the way, we also have a really cool thing from Orange Insoles. It's the Kegerator, and it's right over there. You can win this baby, and um, you can put it as an end table in your bedroom. Maybe you put it in the garage, put it in the kitchen. It's your call. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show. to the wildly successful Mr. Obvious show. <laughs> I'm your host, Mr. Obvious. Let's take a call. Hello, Mr. Obvious show. Uh, hello, is this Mr. Obvious? Speaking. Hi, Mr. Obvious. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. Uh -huh. uh, I just want to say, uh, first of all, I really love your show. Really enjoy listening to it. I think you do a great job. Well, kind words indeed. And thank you, caller, for calling the Mr. Uh, Obvious show. No, Mr. Obvious? Yes. Uh, here's my problem. Oh, okay. Well, thing is, uh, I think I got some kind of animal. 
uh, trapped in my house. Oh, yeah, like a pest problem or yeah, something? Yeah, uh, uh-huh. well, it's, it's even bigger than that. Uh, I think it's some kind of critter that's trapped down uh, underneath my sink somewhere. Oh, my. Now, do you live in a rural section of town? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, uh-huh. I live on the outskirts of town here, and... Uh, well, here's the thing. I think it's caught underneath my sink, and I've opened the doors and, and in my cabinets there and looked underneath, and I can't find it anywhere, but I can hear him down there making noise. Oh, you say you got a critter and you can hear him. Now, what what yep. kind of sound does he make, caller? Um, well, it's kind of a growling, kind of a... Uh, well, I'll try to imitate it for you. It's kind of like... <laughs> uh huh. Uh, this is under your sink in your kitchen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like you might be caught down there in the pipes. <laughs> now, this is not uncommon for your uh, rurally located homes to have a raccoon or a possum uh, under the house. Now, but you say he might be stuck in the pipes? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Because, uh, in fact, I think that's how he's living there. Uh, he seems to eat stuff that my wife throws away down the sink after dinner. She'll, <laughs> she'll wash the leftovers down the sink uh, after we get done eating. I think that's what he's eating because I can hear him down there growling and uh, chewing. Huh. What was the sound again, caller? Well, it's uh, she'll put the stuff down there in the sink and run the water, and then uh, you can hear him is kind of going... <laughs> I like that. Huh. Now, is there anything else that corresponds with the uh, the growling that your wife does there in the kitchen? Huh. Um, well, it, it does seem like uh, it usually happens whenever she tries to turn the light on. <laughs> There's a light switch there. She'll try to turn it on. The uh, thing is, the light don't come on. Um, huh. I, I, I think the light bulb must be burnt out or something, but I can't even find a place to change the light bulb on it. Anyway, she'll try to turn that light switch on, and uh, you can hear him down there just... Um, Seems to make him mad as anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is in the kitchen under the sink, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, I, I figure he's caught in the pipes. <laughs> right. So I figured I'd try to get him out of there. Uh-huh. Well, I reached down there with my hands when I heard him growling. And I mean, that thing about ripped my fingers off. Did it to me? Boy, it hurt. Well, I think I know what your problem is, caller. It's, uh, it's a garbage disposal. So, uh... Uh, is that uh, something something like a raccoon? No, caller. It's uh. No, it's something something littler like a uh, like a mouse. <laughs> no, caller. It's a machine that's hooked to your uh, your drain pipe there under your sink that chews up uh, uh, food that uh, makes it rinse right down the pipe there. It's an actual machine. It's not an animal at all. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. I never made the connection. <laughs> get rid of the garbage. There you go. Sounds like a critter. Just, uh, no, no, no. I, can't. Uh, I know, yeah, it's not a critter. It's a, thanks for calling, though, caller. Mr. Obvious? Yes. You're a lifesaver. Thank you. Uh, that'll do it for this week's show. Uh, thank you, and uh, good luck uh, from everyone here on the Mr. Obvious Show. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs>talk about something fairly mundane actually with what? doug you hate baseball am i correct uh, baseball players always they just they, they look like cops so much they're so, 
<laughs> no, they're so joyless. Are you out of your mind? But no, you watch you, you watch any other sport, and they're happy, and they're pumping up the crowd, they're high-fiving, and baseball, guys, they just look so joyless and smug, and they just sit there in the dugout, and they look like cops. You know how you know someone gets pulled over, they have no registration, and you need nine officers, and they all stand around with their arms crossed and self-important looking, at, no joy in their face. So what do you do during Because I can tell you love I mean, I, I'll so bet much. on baseball. Because it's, I think that's the only reason people watch it is because it's the only thing on in the summer. I, I, I hate the I, I hate the Yankees. That's the only reason I watch baseball is to hope the Yankees lose. And that's I guess that's probably a miserable just because they buy their team and their fans are so obnoxious. Like if you're gonna just be cheering in the stands, pick an underdog and have some character. If you have money on the game, it's different. That's like having stock in a company. Yeah. But if you're just gonna be a, a a loud mouth, you know, beer fueled ass bag in the stands. Pick the underdog. Rooting for the Yankees is like going to a casino and cheering for the house. You're already supposed to win. You're standing behind the blackjack table going, oh, dealer busted your ass, bitch. Oh, that's my dealer. I got my dealer jersey on. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. If you're not, you're a communist. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. <laughs> You're so weird. You have no idea. Essential Morning Radio. <laughs> this is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7, 24-7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hey, Chick. He's over there in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold. Hey, Chick. And the flannel Friday. I always forget. Yeah. Got the flannel shirt on. Tom, would you ever wear a uh, flannel? Sure. Flannel. You would. I don't have one, but if I did, I'd wear it. Maybe not. Why don't you have one? He's got that's flannel, two pockets. Warm, two pocket, nice. Mm -hmm. Warm, no, very nice. Yeah, all right. Are you hot blooded? Would you get too hot in a flannel? No, check it and see. Uh, yeah. okay. Got a fever of one hundred three. <laughs> really, <laughs> hot blooded. Hot blooded. <laughs> you dirty white boy. You. <laughs> what? Different song. Oh, huh. there's Ace Cosby. He's a long, long way from home. I'm Chick McGee, a lesser foreigner song, and here's Tom. Do they do Hot Blooded and Cold as Ice back to back? <laughs> no. we're, we're confused out here. They're going to sell them both to Starbucks. First, we're ready to rock, and now we're hot, now we're cold. Uh, hot, cold, sister, mother. Yeah, it's very confusing. You ever see the end of Chinatown, Jess? Don't. No, I don't know about Chinatown. Oh, you got to get a great movie. Stop it. I haven't seen it. It's a you know, movie. it kind of takes like some work on the audience's part to go. What exactly oh, is oh good? And God. then when you do, you go, ah. Oh. Yeah, that man's a monster. <laughs> and he keeps mentioning it. He's got it's a very fine movie. <laughs> it okay. is a fine movie. And he was dating Houston's daughter at the time, the director. Uh, yeah, that's a, Nicholson, yeah. a little obscure fact, but a true. It's not that obscure. Uh, now, um, we need to move back to the sports page, <laughs> I believe. Uh, or unless, well, there's another option. Stupid. Wait a minute. Hold it. I had no idea I had another option. Absolutely. What do you got? Sexy yeah. Here he is with his joke of the day. Chick. Yes, Ace. <laughs> Eleven days to be Halloween. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, I can't oh, wait. Do you ever wonder what a ghost says when he makes a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> I ever wonder what a ghost says when he makes a mistake. No, Ace, what? That was a boo-boo. That was Ace Cosby's joke of the day. <laughs> Very good, Ace. Thank you, Ace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, our four-year-old fans are losing their mind. <laughs> and we're all losing our minds for mm. Omaha Steaks. It's the Omaha Steaks semi-annual sale Yay. with 50% off at omahasteaks.com. It's the perfect time to grab your fall grilling favorites. Plus, when you use our code BTS at checkout, you're going to get an additional $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Thank you, Omaha Steaks. And Ace, thank you for all this spooky season fun. You are what, all right. Right. Thank you very much, Ace. <laughs> now, uh, we've uh, exercised that option. We move forward and return to the sports page with Chick McGee. Stupid world record. What do you got? Britain's, Britain's 12th <laughs> oldest man. Oh, wait, yeah? Wait what is this now? What? what? <laughs> 
Britain's 12th oldest man just turned 107. That's amazing. <laughs> now, you're probably wondering, why did I choose this story? Well, you're going to find out. He recently revealed the secret to his long life, eating the cereal known as shredded wheat. Uh, shredded wheat, my favorite cereal. How about that? Mr. Leonard Howes of the United Kingdom. Born in 1916. Congratulations, Tom. You have something in common with one of the oldest people on the planet. That's right. <laughs> Once again, the benefits of a classical education. <laughs> oh, is that right? Oh, you learned to eat shredded wheat? <laughs> Leonard served in World War II, and he was old then. <laughs> and has seen five different monarchs on the throne. Think about that. Oh, while well, they're using the bathroom? That's weird. That is weird. He's, he's, oh. he's a, a bit hey, of a freak. Queen huh? Elizabeth's on the crapper. Mm -hmm. And then there's King George. What's it like working with Philistines? Well, I'm glad you asked. Do um, you think somebody has, a, has collected a sample of a king or queen and kept it? Yes. <laughs> Some sort of... I bet for D... I bet the DNA... I, I bet there's a bank somewhere... You know, a bank of royal dumps? Of, of DNA. I bet there's a bank of oh, royal yeah. DNA. These Absolutely. people are egomaniacal enough to think that... Yeah. I mean, they believe the whole thing about the succession based on, you know, your seed. <laughs> Didn't bathrooms at first had to be... Indoor bathrooms had to be way up high, so gravity yeah. would take the... Uh, I believe indoor bathrooms now. were more or less uh, elaborate buckets. <laughs> <laughs> and you would go, I say... Bing, uh, Bellingsley, uh, I have filled the bucket. You you may take it now. Thank you. Yeah, it's, a, right. it's a good one. Be okay. careful. It might be sloshy. Of course it is. Uh, Ms. Carol Howes, his daughter in, uh, daughter in law. How old is this guy again? 107. Because of what? Oh, <laughs> shredded wheat. Eating shredded wheat. Yes. That's that, what he says. I guess in the abstract, that might be the interpretation i don't think it that's is why he lived so long that and the fact that during world war ii he was in the mail room <laughs> <laughs> that probably helped <laughs> he put his long life down to eating shredded wheat with full fat milk and plenty of sugar for as long as he can remember there you go okay oh boy that's delicious right. doesn't say anything about equal there tom <laughs> well i ate my shredded wheat with skim milk I eat mine with mustard. I like to ju just what? dip it. I know, just dip one in mustard and eat it that way. Is That's a snack. Making that is sick. fascinating. <laughs> well, 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 That's fascinating. fascinating. Wait a minute. Do you know what That's you, making that, me sick. They're, they're, you, they're just buy Triscuits. They're the same thing almost. They are, but when you're out of Triscuits and <laughs> you, you have to, that's now, that's how it eat, happened. I didn't know you smoked pot. <laughs> <laughs> do you eat, see, I don't I occasionally will eat the mini yeah. I don't like those. I like the full oh, bricks slow. of yeah. shredded wheat. Yes. You put them in a plastic bag and take that hammer you have in your kitchen and mm -hmm. beat the hell out of it. This is true. And then true. you put them in the bowl. Make, okay. He's making mush. Is yeah. What he's making. Still, and then you add grape nuts. Yeah, right. Oh, that extra crunch. <laughs> You're just uh, eating mortar. <laughs> that, that, that extra dryness. <laughs> yes. And then you can actually build a house out of your defecant. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I would assume so. And I, 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 Then I get some oil dry and I put that in there. Now, maybe someone can help me. I, a, a store that I used to go to that is no longer around, they used to have the circular hockey puck size shredded wheat. I've never seen those. I believe made by a different company. Oh. I think they might have been Quaker Oats or something. Mm. You can, I can't find those anymore. Hmm. They were great. Now, the ones they have now are kind of loaf-like shaped. Yes. Most things that are great are often discontinued and <laughs> modified. Yeah. Too good. <laughs> we just can't sell them anymore. They're right. too good. Right. That's what they I, we have enough money. <laughs> we, we, we're tired of profits. So much for success. We don't need these. Done. Real, real done. Yeah, I love those. Well, isn't, that, isn't that great news? Yeah. Shredded I do. Weed. I love frosted mini weeds. Oh, those are so good. They really are. And they are good soggy. Yeah, I think so. Better what? soggy. Really? Yeah. Hmm. And it, but, Chick, you're right. It is mush. It's mush. <laughs> yeah. well, no, the frosted mini wheat, it's Get really some, uh, heavy, heavy sugar and delicious. Yeah, mm -hmm. I delicious. know. It, it is heavy sugar. Honey nut Cheerio and raisin bran and mix it up. Boy, mm. that's, that's a Why are you guys mixing your cereal? I'm with you, Jess. I'm not a mixer. No, uh, never. Either. Got to, never. Got to mix. Medicaid. Cereal and race. <laughs> no mixing. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, is I, that a... I didn't know which one of you was going to say. I'm kidding. He of course I'll mix cereals. Oh, man. Uh, so stupid. <laughs> You're a madman. Sure, oh, he's an idiot. Idiot. <laughs> it's new from Lester Maddox. Oh. It's, the, it's the cereal. 
<laughs> you smash with a hatchet while kicking people out of your restaurant. <laughs> oh, no. Isn't he the one that walked off Cabot Show, <laughs> Lester Maddox? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, a, yeah. there's a terrific uh, 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 Randy Newman song about that uh, on the great album called Good Old Boys. That's... Highly recommended. Uh, what's coming up in sports? Well, not any Randy Newman song. Well, maybe maybe there are a Randy Newman song. Oh, too. Pat, would you do your coming Randy up. Newman tribute when we come back? I sure. just love that. Okay, that's one of my and favorites. And a world record in sports. Coming. Okay, they don't sound so enthusiastic. <laughs> come on, come on, be a homer. Randy, Talk about Randy how great Allen. it is. Uh, we got nun, we got nuns in the news, Texas in the news, uh, and um, I want to remind everybody that there's a movie out there on Netflix starting today from our friend Bill Burr. Tell me more, Chick. Yes, sir. It's called Old Dads, available now only on Netflix, starring our buddy Bill Burr, Bobby Cannavale, and Bo Keem Woodbine. Old Dads will have you raving that this is absolutely the comedy of the year. Bill Burr, Bobby Cannavale, and Bokeem Woodbine star as three best friends tackling fatherhood later in life. The results are crazy and fun and hilarious. Old Dad's available now exclusively on Netflix. When we come back, I got some more of our Bill Burr interview for you. How about that? Okay. Okay, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show. Okay, now, um, uh, uh, yep. <laughs> Pat is going to remove her wig. Um, go ahead, Pat. Uh, can you can you see it? We're taking a little video. Well, let, uh, let Miss Pat put a hat on. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you okay. yanked it right off. There, there, is that there clipped on? Oh, no, you've got like a yarmulke. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's a, that's that's a skull, skull cap to hold the wig on. It's kind of like so a yarmulke. So it don't fly off in the wig, wig see, Tom. <laughs> see, we're already down to the skull on your head, uh, so we don't get, give you oh, a no, skull Miss Pat is not oh, going to place her wig on my head. Go. That's really tight, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, Let me do it. Don't mess up my wig, Tom. <laughs> You've got a giant melon, Are you supposed Tom? to cover my no ears? Idea. Yeah, for Ow. a minute. Wait a minute, Tom. I got this. Ow! <laughs> Let the listeners know out there that there are about 30 cameras right Ow! now. Ow! You're really hurting my ear. Let me make sure it's style right. Trained right. on Tom. Do I have bangs? I just want to have... You look like you Weird Al Yankovic. Yankovic. Chick, describe how do I look. I can't see. Uh, you have a very dark, uh, curly-haired wig on your head, you and you're, with your pale Tom. skin, you kind of look like Tommy Lee Jones in Lincoln. Tommy Lee Jones in Lincoln. Not Denzel? No, no, no. no. Not Denzel in no, flight? You, no, no, you're a little too no, little too light. You look like you remind me of Tommy Lee Just Jones. Because in you have Lincoln. dark hair does not make you a black man. <laughs> the 13th amendment <laughs> will uh, Did Tommy Lee Jones have the black wife? Uh-huh. Oh yes. Oh. You're giving Oh, don't give That's away right. the movie. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. no, they don't already won the Oscars. Oh. Sure oh, you need a sister in your bedroom, Tom. Oh, yeah. I have to. That's what you need, I was Tom. hoping That's... for Denzel, and I, I've no, got... You, no. You, look like, you don't look like you Denzel. Look like slave owner. Christy hit it on the nose. You do look like Tommy Lee Jones in Lincoln. Yeah. Did you hear what she just said? Mm. No. He look like a slave owner. I look like a slave owner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, yes, look at that. It'd be very uncomfortable. Does like, it really? Yeah, I... Uh -huh. well, as far as I know, that never mind. We'll just move forward. Miss Pat could be your Sally Hemings. How about that? Hey, what's going on, buddy? I don't feel like walking. I have lower back pain, some uh, foot discomfort. So you're just rolling around? Yeah. There are better options. You need to try orange insoles. Orange insoles? Yeah, check those out. Proper support for your feet. You're gonna have arch yeah. support. It's got that deep heel cup. These do feel better. All right. Who needs you? Not me. Orange insoles will help you feel better and do more guaranteed. Get your orange insoles today and step into a world of comfort. Google knows everything. It's yeah. incredible. You yeah. can wake up after a long night of drinking and being like, uh, Google, who is this girl in bed with me? <laughs> Google will be like, do you mean who is this guy? Uh, <laughs> don't you mean? <laughs> oh, no, Google, what did I do last night? 
Do you mean what didn't you do? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like technology is crazy. I like uh, a- Amazon. It, it, it's I, I'm growing increasingly um, terrified of you know the robot takeover oh, okay. of Earth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Amazon, yeah. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon knows what you're going to get. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. The, uh, hey, yeah. you bought this CD. Yeah, I'll you bet you'd like, like this yeah. one. Yeah. It's like even in the last Terminator, yeah. uh, the robots couldn't read our minds. You know, if you like Amazon.com, you may also enjoy being enslaved by robots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh-huh. yeah. 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 You're right, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like having robots. Amazon everywhere. does suggest I, stuff for you. I like like the um, the spammers uh, that use like the very uh, they always use like a a common name like like Steve the, mm-hmm. oh, some, some yeah. generic mm-hmm. subject like been a while you know they try to pretend like uh, you know it's someone you know or whatever and they open it up it's like do you want free porn <laughs> like well only a dear dear friend of mine would know how much I enjoy free <laughs> porn uh, <laughs> click my computer just explodes uh, yeah thank you Steve uh, the, <laughs> go buy a new one I email him back I'm like dear t- Steve thanks so much for trying to send me a free porn <laughs> damnedest thing my computer <laughs> exploded. <laughs> Could you please resend? <laughs> <laughs> Damnedest thing. Our guest in the studio was comedian Shane Moss. I actually, I, I realized how addicted I was to uh, internet porn uh-huh. recently. I, I broke my computer. <laughs> I didn't have a computer for uh, like four or five weeks. Uh-huh. It was sent in. And I actually, this is one of the most pathetic things I've ever done in my life. I found myself um, one day um, satisfying to my myself to the idea of having a working computer. <laughs> it's like thinking about huh. screen sizes and... Oh. <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, you're, yeah, okay. What'd you do, dog? Uh, so I screwed up. You know how too many times I, I say the wrong thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, Kathy's into this mail order stuff again. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. She's into this big time. I came home the other day. There was a case of breast enlargement cream on the kitchen table. <laughs> there was? Breast enlargement cream? <laughs> yeah, sitting right there on the table. I said, what the hell is this for? She said she rubs it on her breasts. They get bigger. Uh-huh. I said, just use toilet paper. It's been working on your butt for eight years. <laughs> oh, that was a beautiful I'll tell you what I sound like when I make love. To a woman. Yeah. I'm actually pretty bad at it. I call it making like. When I make like to a woman, I sound like a very scared man who's crossing a very thin sheet of ice. <laughs> and all he's trying to do is get to the side alive. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sounds something like this. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> oh my God, that's so good. Oh my God. I have to lay down. That's Woo! hot. Yeah, that's hot. You don't say we didn't warn you. Oh, my God. There's laughter ahead. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin. Hello, Chick. How you doing, boy? Pretty good, son. Excellent. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. He's at the uh, I Hate Stephen Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. We were talking about this movie that came out on Netflix today, uh, Old Dads. Yep. With our friend comedian Bill Burr, and uh, Bill's got a couple of great actors working with him, Bo Keen Woodbine and Bobby Cannavale. And I thought we'd feature a little bit of our interview with uh, with Bill. Uh, and uh, once again, did I mention it's on Netflix? Okay, uh, that's uh, starting today, so you can watch that over the weekend. Here we go. Here's a little bit of Bill. Our guest is comedian Bill Burr. Yeah, I'm an old dad like you. know, You have a, a little bit of gray in your beard. Do you ever get the thing where you're out somewhere and they think you're the grandpa? They look at, they <laughs> oh, look at... I got into it. I got into it with this guy at one of these bouncy house places. His kid was like... His kid was like three years old and already weighed like 90 pounds, which is like child abuse. It's like, stop feeding that kid. So the kid just was coming up to my kid looking like a, like a cyclops or something. So my kid freaked out, started crying. And the, 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 the big fat kid just started smashing this toy over my son's head. And it was one of these things where there was no way for me to get in it. It was like a maze. So I just started yelling, going, hey, 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 stop it or whatever. So this other dad got mad at me. 
you know, for yelling at his kid. And he just starts, he looks through the structure. He's like, we good, bro? We good? <laughs> right? So I just stuck my face right up against the screen. I go, what? Because <laughs> you know, we live in a world where I can't be like, well, why don't you get your fat, you know what, of a kid to stop hitting my kid? So he goes all the way into where I am, right? Doesn't look at me and he starts bumping into me. No. Oh. Uh. And I go, uh, is it, I go, so I go, Bike Buddy, is there not enough room in here for you? And he turns around, looks at me, and he goes, What are you, like a buck 80? He goes, I weighed a, he's like sizing me up. He goes, I weighed a buck 80 in, in high school. And I'm like, Yeah, and then you ate a bunch of burgers and fries. Don't act like you went to the gym. <laughs> so I don't know what's, long story short, it was, it was all this machismo stuff that he was doing. And when he went to leave, my beard was a little longer. And he goes, all right, see you later there, Grandpa. <laughs> and I go, all right, buddy, keep eating that cake. <laughs> Bill Burr is our it guest. Was really childish. Um, <laughs> really childish, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> uh, an old dad. I get that a lot. I think I'm the grandpa. Uh, and don't your daughters think that's hilarious? They never correct them. <laughs> God, they think that's funny. Hey, Pretty Daddy, good. that guy thinks you're my grandpa. <laughs> oh, all right. Thanks very much. Um, uh, Bill Burr's movie is called Old Dad. It's about this situation, and it's on Netflix right now. So check it out with our friend Bill Burr. We were uh, talking earlier about our porn names. And, and again, this is because... Uh, there was a news story about um, uh, a house that was overtaken by some uh, young ruffians, apparently. They yes. turned it into a strip club in the middle of a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they eventually got busted. There were stolen cars there, stolen credit Lots cards. Lots of things, yeah. Um, apparently, it was quite a, quite a thing. But house I, of sin. How do you make the porn name if you want to make a porn name for yourself? It's uh, your first pet and the street you lived on. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, we have some people calling in, emailing in, and, and sharing their porn, porn names with us. What do you got? Uh, Rex Chicago. <laughs> that's good. Like that's, it. the, that's good because it, 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 it's it got the double meaning of Rex. Mm -hmm. It sounds like every woman in Chicago has had their, you know, wrecked by. Been a, wrecked. A, Been wrecked. Wrecked the, by Rex. Uh, wrecked me. Uh, Jigs 331. Hmm. Remember when Jigs was uh, the uh, rich guy in one of those uh, old comic strips? What was the name of that? Are you sure it what? wasn't Jeeves? No, it no. was uh, Maggie. Jigs and Maggie. That's oh, right. I, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? No. Uh, Tonto Chestnut. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> they named a pet Tonto, Tom. Hmm. Maybe it was... Um... Well, what else oh, is what yeah, I what was next? <laughs> there, Jack? No, I mean, no. I... Perhaps it was a wolf. Maybe they were fans of the Lone Ranger. Could be. But that would be a great, that's a great name, especially if you, if it were an indigenous uh, porno star. I'm sure there are sure. some. <laughs> Ranger Beef Stick. <laughs> they lived on Beef Stick Road? That's what it say. Come on. Hudson <laughs> Sausage. Oh. Uh, Midnight Elm. Kit Kingston. Mm -hmm. that, oh, Kit Kingston's a great that name. That is good. Uh, Blackie Church. Oh. Yeah, that I might be misinterpreted. Named Blackie. <laughs> uh, Puff Shady. <laughs> yeah, she's a Puff Shady. Puff Puff Shady. <laughs> yeah, Puff Shady would be a good name for a lady. Yeah. And my favorite, Bobo Washington. Bobo Washington. Bobo Washington. That sounds more like a professional wrestler. <laughs> that does. In the, tradition, in the tradition of the great Bobo Brazil. Right. One of my favorites as a kid. Bobo Brazil. I, yeah. find, I find it hard to believe there's a sausage road. And that maybe it's a... Ace is skeptical. City. And what else are you skeptical about this week, Ace? Yeah, couples that aren't really dating. Oh, oh who, yeah. who would that be? Oh, are you still stuck on that? Travis uh, and Taylor? Uh, Chiefs, uh, Chiefs are home Sunday. She's what? Chiefs are home. <laughs> okay. Does that mean she'll be there? Doesn't Taylor Swift she have her bought own a, uh, She suite? bought a, yeah. according to reports, she bought her own, uh, bought a suite uh, a couple <laughs> Good days for her. Ago. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd spend money on a suite if I wasn't dating the guy. Ace is not uh, believing that she actually bought the suite. <laughs> okay, no, and here's what's oh, happening. Um, yeah. You had the one beefsteak. Beefsteak. Because it wasn't there. The alternate version of this was the last thing you ate. Remember that? Yes. That's the stripper name. And 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 what's so the formula is? Um, oh, I forget. Uh, what what was it? We just talked about this. Uh, the st no. Is it your first car? Yeah. Ma make of car. Oh, make yeah. of car. Make, make, yeah. make yeah. of car. And the last and thing the you last ate. thing you had yes. in your mouth. Right. So okay. so sausage and beefsteak may have been those. Okay, okay. Right. that was that formula. Oh, okay. So Ranger beefsteak. Yeah. 
So what, oh, what, what, would, you, what would you be now, Jess? You've been here for a while. Have you had anything to eat? Mm, uh, so it would be, so it was an Eagle premiere. Oh, and so an, I could an say. An Eagle premiere. That was the name of your car? The, oh. the Eagle premiere was the name of my car. It yeah. was, it was an the, AMC product. Yeah. Right? It was my grandpa's and he died. So I got his car. And well, uh, it's not as humorous as <laughs> Josh's sad death story. So. Oh, that that was humorous, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the one where you got the banjo. Yeah. 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 That was, we all thought I, that was. So I forget much. that story, Tom. I'd rather had a car, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think a car is a little better. <laughs> I, I, more sad. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to make you sad right now. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what, so it would be what again? Now? So mine would be, um, I could go with like per Premier yogurt. Would that be a, a good stripper no. name? No. No. <laughs> Premier yogurt, yogurt isn't a very... <laughs> no, uh, yeah. no. Conjures up images. Yeah. It does. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, the Premier yogurt sounds like a real product. Yeah. Not a, not a stripper name. Uh, I had uh, I had a Jetta. So I could... Get, Jetta's a good first name, right? It is. Right? Oh, Jetta, yeah. 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 Jetta Pinkett Smith. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> there you go. Yes. <laughs> Remember uh, Jet Rink? Remember that? No. That was a James Dean in uh, Giant. That was his character. Oh, name. wow. Okay. Yeah. I didn't remember that. Uh, well, um, feel free if you've got a good porn name, by all means, send it to us. Or don't. Um, we can just stop with that if you want. <laughs> oh, I love these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either way. Here's one. You can, oh, oh, there's that. Here we go. Uh, Ram Long John. <laughs> oh, wow. That's certainly what yeah. he had, the person had in their mouth. Yeah. Uh, Long John? A donut, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, what? Um, Essentially a Bismarck, but. So they had a Do they had a Dodge Ram and they just ate a donut. So they're Ram Ram Long John sounds. That's dead. That's, that's great. That's got everything. It's got power. It's got mm -hmm. length. It implies girth. Have, uh, yeah, very. <laughs> Are serious. Long Johns cream filled or not? No, no. Not, at least not when I grew up. No. Really? No, they have. They usually have icing. Yes. Yeah, but they're not. Are the Are those Bismarcks or what do they call the cream filled ones? I Are think they? they the Bismarcks may have filling. Yeah. Huh. No, but this may, would this work? This Malibu granola. It yeah, would, that it works. Work, yeah. yeah, for a stripper, maybe. Sure, uh, Malibu. Yeah. That sounds sexy. I mean, Malibu's. I kn Malibu I knew a, I, there was a stripper named Malibu at uh, really the Penthouse Club in East St. Louis who was, was it on the queen of the um, lunch buffet, if you will. Like oh. she, the guys who went during the day. <laughs> I bet Malibu made more money than any like any Friday or Saturday night stripper because she like. Got the businessmen oh, during yeah. the week or whatever. Right. I knew a guy who was, I, the only reason I know, the, I, the, there was a guy who was obsessed with Malibu, and so he would always talk about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. So she would be dancing and while he, the gentleman would come in for the lunch buffet. Yeah, and we he treated us all to lunch one day. I was the there. Food? Oh, it was one of the best uh, veal parmesan sandwiches I've ever had. <laughs> wow. Who would have thought? There yeah, who a, knew? Uh, <laughs> Didn't you guys do lingerie lunch here? Did you guys ever go to those? I I hosted lingerie lunch where they weren't strippers, but they might as well have been. Yeah. Well, they were, but they <laughs> were. Some around them. They and, pretended and to be amateurs. Lingerie. And uh, oh. there was also a, an adult establishment that served uh, lunch around here, a lunch buffet. I've heard. I wonder that what that deal is. Most of the uh, strip clubs, buffet and food is really good. Yeah, there's I've that been one. to two. That one, and then uh, comedian Tommy Jonigan and I spent a breakfast. Uh, we we <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> it was like after shows. It was like three or four a.m. Oh. in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We had a and, and the breakfast was awesome. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, the eye opener. What's the one that's known in? Is it Rachel's? Rachel's. It's, it's like it's, a five star steakhouse. I think Michelin it's on type Michelin yeah. uh, restaurant. I hope that's yes. still open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pubic hair in my steak. Shut up, or everybody will want one. <laughs> Got a closed yes, circuit message. Oh, okay. I apologize. This is just for the. Um, we do I, that all the time. Yeah. I scheduled uh, my road journey today to cross the Mackinac Bridge during your show. Oh. As I uh, head to the Upper Peninsula of In Michigan, honor of you, I would imagine. Uh, to do some uh, deer scouting preseason. Uh huh. If I timed it right, we should be crossing the bridge as you read this. Tom, I'll let my son stick his head out the window and look down oh. at the greats just for you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Nick. Now, the idea here is if you go just the right speed, the great disappears. Yes. And it looks like you're hovering over the Mackinac Straits. It's terrifying. It's a great <laughs> thing to do. If you're driving, you probably should have someone else drive. Mm. 
Be it's safe. even scary if you open the door and look down. Yeah, don't do uh, that. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> don't do yes. that. So much for my close it's circuit so, message. Like you're uh, thank you very much. We're still doing our sports cast. This is unbelievable. Okay. Um, right now, uh, if you're hungry, and who isn't? We were just talking about some hungry, great food. Hungry, hungry, hippo. Josh, tell me more. I'd be happy to. Fall in the air, sweater weather, falling leaves, crisp mornings. And what else, my friends? Grilling. Oh, it's yeah. a great time of year to grill. You got tailgating. You got the urge for cozy comfort food. Well, Omaha Steaks has all of that. All your fall cravings are covered with 50% off site-wide. That's right. It's their semi-annual sale. 50% off all your favorite tender, juicy, extra-aged steaks, like those butcher's cut filet mignon. Some even come wrapped in bacon. Talk about uh, a double deliciousness. Are you kidding me? Go to omahasteaks.com today. Use code BTS at checkout. You're going to get an extra 30 bucks off your order. So 50% off plus an extra $30 when you say BTS at checkout? Well, don't say it, Tom. You want to type it into your... Of course. Computer, you see. With Omaha Steaks, the possibilities are endless. Endless flavor, endless value, incredible entrees, all those scrumptious sides, decadent desserts, so much more. All of them are 50% off. It's the semi-annual sale. And don't forget, every bite is backed by their 100% unconditional money-back guarantee. Go to omahasteaks.com, shop all of your delicious favorites for half the price. Don't forget, enter that promo code BTS at checkout for an extra $30 off and hurry because this semi-annual sale is only for a limited time. And remember, minimum purchase may apply. That won't be a problem. You're going to want everything. Visit omahasteaks.com for details. Uh, side note, don't forget the lasagna. It's unbelievable at Omaha Steaks. Uh, coming up. Great story about Ozzy Osbourne in the news and um, some cool stuff in the world of uh, Texas happening. Oh. I'll tell you about it in a minute. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Stuff from you, <laughs> right? Uh, a guy in the jaw, and um, <laughs> as hard as I could twice in uh, uh, somewhere in New York, Albany, New York. I just played the Palace Theater, and uh, we were gonna go get something to eat. And uh, and it, it was a, a restaurant attached to the hotel, and my bus was across the street because I always stay on my bus. And uh, <laughs> this guy, this girl came over and started talking to us at our table, and I, I don't know her for you know, she's but she. She had her sister does stand up in New York, and Vic Henley was the opening act, and he does stand up in New York, and he knows her. So they were talking across the table. I just, if it wouldn't have been for that, I'd have shoot her away because I was trying to eat my crappy little piece of tilapia. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you must so do very well. She gets up and leaves, and she comes back, and she has her sister on the phone, and she's headlining a club that Vic and I headlined forever in uh, Columbus, Ohio. And so she hands the phone to Vic. She sits down next to me, and Vic can't hear, so he gets up and walks away. And uh, uh. and then a guy comes over to her. So some guy came up to me and asked me, a young guy, for an autograph. I said, I'm trying to eat right now. And, and uh, this guy comes over, pokes her in the shoulder, and says, get over here. And she gets up real nervous and walks over there, and I'm like, ah, man, what is this? And I see the guy walking over towards me. And... Uh, and he goes, how come you took a, took a picture with my girlfriend and didn't take a picture with my son? Both of them were connected to this guy. And I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. But he was standing up, and I was sitting down. So I started to stand up, and he shoved me back down in my chair. Uh-oh. And I'm like, all right, okay. And so it was ugly. It was it was a nice place, too. Wine glasses, tablecloths. <laughs> and it all went flying. Ooh. And uh, I got up and shoved him, and he took a big swing at me and hit me, but not really with a punch, but... But hit me and um, left his jaw just hanging out there. And I'm like, all right, here you go, buddy. You, you can't leave your jaw hanging out there. And I just, boom, boom. And uh, so and he called the cops and filed assault charges on me or tried to. And the cops showed up. And I was like, oh, come he, on, he, man. The old Chevy Chase shoulder kick. <laughs> 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 so uh, It's hard sometimes. You know. So now, you know, and, and that's why now I have to have police everywhere I go because it probably nothing will happen. But if it does, I can't hit people. Yeah. I, and, and uh, you know, I'm 61. I don't, I don't need to be getting in fights or anything. And, and Pat who's not very big, but my, my guy, Pat, that drives a bus and, and uh, manages my road stuff, uh, he was, he's a little guy in stature, but he was, uh, he's a seventh degree 
black belt. And so uh, he actually got this guy in a sleeper hold <laughs> from behind after I hit him. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, the guy started tapping him on the arm, and he goes, this ain't the MMA. You're going to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Josh, and of course. Hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom at Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Pig Skin Pick. I'm powered by the big green egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. <laughs> oh, is that where you go? Are we eligible? Girl, the food was great. The company even better. Why sit here all night long going on about the weather? I know it's our first date And good girls gotta wait But I just turned 83 And you said you're 78 The moon is full, you know what I'm thinking Let's make love, we're old and we're shrinking The hour is late, let's just do it on our first date And use the code Bob and Tom 50 to get 50% off. The code Bob and Tom 50 at factormeals.com slash Bob and Tom 50 to get 50% off. Think you know your pro football and want to put your knowledge to the test? Then play Pigskin Pick'em every week at BobandTom.com. This is your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. Just pick the winners of this week's pro football games and you could win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. Head to BobandTom.com slash contest and play Pigskin Pick'em. And don't miss the Chick McGee Shoe In of the Week, Thursdays on the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. For Batman, it was Batgirl. For Superman, it was Supergirl. And now, meet Spider-Man's female counterpart. From Bob and Tom Productions, it's the superhero women have known about for years. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. There's Josh Arnold. Chick. He's at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Once again, what is the formula for a stripper name? Stripper is model or... Well, it sounds like we've been doing makes of cars mm -hmm. and... Um, First Pat. What was your, last in your mouth? Last in your mouth. For stripper, right. yeah. You're so right. I, then if it was if it was type of car, I would. I had a, my first car was a Fiat Sports Spider, and I, I'd be um, uh, Spider Metamucil wafer. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds sexy. Spider's badass. Yeah. Metamucil wafer, not as. And you had um, you had a Fiat. Fiat Sports Spider, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember what that uh, stood, the, the Fiat? In those days, yeah. Fix it again, Tony. They were, they're, 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 I love my Fiat. I believe. Do we have Nurse Blake? Is this on Nurse Blake joining us? Oh, there we go. Hey. What's up? Uh, hey, Nurse Blake. Are you in a hotel room? I am. Well, it looks very nice. Is it? Is just the, just the one bed in there? Yeah, it's pretty lonely on the road. <laughs> no, because I, whenever I get a hotel room, there's always two beds, and you got to make the decision which one do I get in and which one becomes my, uh, my storage bed. I I'm uh, super bad at making decisions, so they just make it for me, you know? All right. All right. Uh, now we should explain. Nurse Blake is um, uh, kind of a, a comedian slash uh, health advisor. Well, how would you describe your, if you had to do a little met resume, what are yeah, you? Yeah, like, you could come to my show and laugh, but I also might check your blood pressure, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I should point this out. Nurse Blake on the road, Palace Theater, Columbus, Ohio, tonight. 
And then it's the Masonic Temple in Detroit coming up on Sunday. And then October, excuse me, on Saturday, then October 22nd, Clues Auditorium, the famous Clues Hall in Indy. A nurse Blake on the road. How did, they, can you, I know a little bit of the story. Could you explain this transition from being an actual nurse to being a comedian? Yeah, so I've been a nurse for nine years now. And, uh, you know, nursing, it's it's hard. Like people call us healthcare heroes and we get discounts at Chick-fil-A. But at the end of the day, <laughs> Nursing's hard. It's challenging. Uh, about four years into my career, I was like super burnout and anxious. And so I just made videos online on Facebook and they quickly went viral. And then I'm like, you know what? I know nurses like my videos, but I, they also like to drink. So I'm like, <laughs> maybe we should do this like live in person. So then I just started with a few shows in 2019. And now this year, it's like 105 shows. It's insane. Oh, All right. Are you... Um, nursing at all as in, in like in real places anymore? So <laughs> I try under different disguises, but I can't get past the HR department because uh, my mouth is really bad during my show and I will make fun of all the hospitals. <laughs> so <laughs> unfortunately, no one will hire me. So you might see me in your city like just out trying to do procedures for $15, you know, to make some money. <laughs> okay, who, I'm just trying to remember. There's a, a the very fine actor who's an actual physician. Um, well, there's Ken Jong. Ken Jong yeah. from, from The Hangover. Oh, yeah, and, that's right. Yeah, we've talked to Ken. Ken's great, but he was an actual, I mean, is an actual yeah. physician. He's a doctor. Yeah. And yeah. he said, what he told me was so funny was uh, when, when he started doing comedy, all of a sudden, all the comedians found out you're a real doctor. So all, they're all coming up to him. Hey, Ken, can you do this? Can mm -hmm. you do that? Now, are, are you are you back there in the green room with uh, your opening act asking for a quick uh, pelvic exam? I don't know what it would be. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, if, if I get one more text from, like, one of my second cousins, like, hey, you know, it kind of itches. Like, can I send you a picture? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. Please don't. Well, uh, no. Uh, we're talking with Nurse Blake. Um, and uh, I just want to uh, shout out to the great nurses, men and women everywhere. I've had a couple of major issues, and the nurses are the very best, and I, you can't give them enough love. So I know you're having fun with it, but God bless every nurse out there. It's brutally difficult work. You're dealing with me. <laughs> you're dealing with people like Chick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, one of the things I found... Just you, write me the script for the pain <laughs> then. So Let's go. I, I was recovering from something pretty serious, Nurse Blake. I can remember I'm standing in my room, and they've got the curtains and everything, and the, they, the nurse comes up, and, and he goes... Uh, should, should we close the curtain? And I, I literally said, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I just I don't what, care. It's fine. You can look at anything you want. You can pro, and just, I've got to start feeling better. Do it. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, th thank you for the nursing part of your life and bringing some comedy to nurses is great. You know, just like I always brought like comedy and humor to, to my patients I would care for. And I'm like, you know what? I should also bring it to the nurses, too, because we need it, you know, just as much as anybody, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the shows are insane. Like if you could think of a nurse in your life, you know, they're probably the, the craziest or wildest friend you've had. They probably tell the most inappropriate jokes. Um, so yeah. think of like a thousand of those at a venue at my show. It's so loud. We always break the alcohol sales record every <laughs> night. Uh, it's super fun. Now, I should point out, uh, you're going to be uh, Tuesday in Louisville, and then you've got uh, Cleveland up on Wednesday, Kalamazoo, Michigan, October 26th. That's a Thursday. Our friends in Madison, Wisconsin will want to greet you Friday, October 27th. And then our friends in Green Bay, the 28th. You'll be at the, uh, at the at, uh, and then in Chicago, the 29th, Milwaukee coming up. Lots of places where you can hear this show. Des Moines, Omaha, St. Louis, and more. Peoria, Cincinnati, Lexington. Check out uh, online Nurse Blake and find out the tour schedule. Nurse Blake, I, I can't help but notice if you raise your left arm again, there is, I believe, a tattoo or two there. Do you mind if I ask? Of course. Yeah. What have we got there? I have, like, a butterfly. I This is, like... This is like a cover up of like oh, my like, astrological sign, a Taurus. It's like <laughs> Jesus, so, look so, at the size so, of that actually, thing. <laughs> it's actually really funny. So as I was getting this cover up, I was like, I just want something Greek, you know, like a Greek god. So the tattoo artist is like, oh, okay, I got you. And I'm sending pictures to all my friends. I'm like, oh, it's Zeus, it's Zeus. And they're like, I don't think it's Zeus. I think it's the water god. Now I don't know who that is. So I don't even know <laughs> what Greek god I have on my body. 
Um, I, I, uh, Poseidon is. Weird. I don't know if that. I don't Poseidon. Know if... Poseidon. That's oh. right. Oh, I, I thought it was. I thought I it was Pelle, Pellegrino, the the water guy. <laughs> oh, that's the Italian. Uh, oh, that's no, the Italian. Okay, so I thought the Italian was Dasani. That's, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the Roman yeah. guy, Pellegrino. Yeah. Oh, good call. It's for Secco. Uh, yeah, okay, there, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, Nurse Blake is our guest. I imagine the first couple times she got on stage, you probably had to have a bracer to get up there, a little bit of a shot of something. Is, is that, <laughs> what? Is that, Okay. I'm trying to help well, him. Well, 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 we do like a PSP. So like as a nurse, like you still get anxious, like going into the unit because you don't know what you're going to see or interact with. So we call it PSP. It's a pre-shift poop. And um, <laughs> I, I even, All I'll right. even do that now. It's just a pre-show poop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, well, once again, Nurse Blake on the road telling horror stories about, uh, well, since you, I guess uh, since you're not using people's actual names, you can tell. Can you just tell us one yeah. quick story before we have to have to say goodbye? Yeah, a lot of people ask me. They're like, when did you get funny? How did you know you were going to be a comedian? And I remember I was telling this joke uh, to this patient. She was so sweet. And she just laughed so hard she threw a clot. And, oh, you know, wow. that's when I knew. <laughs> wow. That's pretty funny. That's funny. <laughs> glad she didn't. Glad she didn't have a PSP right there. <laughs> that, that yeah, would have been awful. Point. Hey, check out Nurse Blake. Uh, a, 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 a very specific perspective on comedy. Thank you for your nursing, and thanks for helping out all those great nurses out there, Nurse Blake. Thanks, everyone. Nice to meet you. You too. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Have fun out there. Oh, that's great. <laughs> He's going to be visiting lots of places where they can hear us right now, so that's super cool. Now, have we finished sports? Yes, sir, we, we did. Have. Yep, that oh, was it. I had no idea. You have to tell me when it's done. But what a great sportscast. Two and a half, two and a half hours of solid... Uh, well, thank you, Tom. Solid, solid sports. I know. That was the case. This is what you farm it for. Wherever you go, whatever you do, always be a good sport. Jess... According to the Austin American Statesman, a new analysis reveals that Texas is the cussing capital of the United States. Woo-hoo! Okay. Yeah. The ranking conducted by bonusfinder.com reviewed posts on the website Reddit to determine who cursed the most. There were 4,743 curse words within 691 posts reviewed for Texas which averaged about 6.9 curse words per post. That's great. Wow. Now, um, they also ranked several other, uh, several other states here. Uh, it's interesting, I think. Do you, do you have the results of each? Uh, I do. So, obviously, Texas is at number one, followed by, a close second, Ohio, 6.7 curse words per Buck post. Buck eyes! What? And what Chick just said <laughs> What did you say? <laughs> Buck eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he, wasn't, Buck he wasn't trying to prove the point. <laughs> right. Buck eyes! <laughs> Round on the end and high in the middle. Oh, high oh. So what would you what would you guys think would be one in the top three? So what's the next? Oh, one? If you God. had to guess, when you think of New York, first, I would have guessed. You'd, 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 uh, Vegas, Chicago. New York is not even in the top ten. No kidding. Yeah, it's Florida. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your bitches. Florida followed by Tennessee, <laughs> Missouri is number five. Josh. Oh. Uh, Iowa at number six, followed by Indiana, Louisiana, Oklahoma, and Idaho. Okay. And it drops pretty significantly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Texas uh, way out front with the most cursing. And this has nothing to do with population, uh, the no, amount no, no. of. This is all about? Per uh, per post. Okay. Mm-hmm. In other words, they would read a post, and then they would determine how many curse words were in it. Now, do you say curse or cuss? Grew up saying cuss. I, I said cuss once here in front of a celebrity, and he made fun of me so hard that I never said it again. I've said cursed ever since. Huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I grew up saying cuss. Mm-hmm. That's a cuss word. That's mm-hmm. a cuss word. You can't <laughs> yeah, say, yeah. we had a cuss jar when I was a kid. You put a quarter in it when you cussed. Really? Did yeah. anybody say swear? Mm. Um, no. Yeah, swear words. We would no, say, yeah. I, You would say that? Yeah, yeah, using yeah. swear words. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't use swear words. Yeah, I... I we use cuss words around the house. Yeah, in, uh, never, never curse though. No, in the Wes Anderson movies that he makes for kids, oh, they yeah. they say cuss instead of the word. I love that. I oh, do cuss. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the cuss are you cussing me? Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but it is. Which came first? Is is curse? Wait a minute. Like wash is to wash. Yeah. Or. Yeah, which is the short question. for which? I, I, I don't know. It would, I don't either. It would stand to reason curse is the actual word, and cuss is just kind of the 
Mm-hmm. There's the, that's the variation. I'll say it. you do not use a curse word, <laughs> so it's that kind of thing. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and it just kind of got lazy. Curse. Don't don't curse in my house. <laughs> I will not be that's, cursed at. Uh, I bet you're right. I always and I always liked the uh, people who try to clean it up. And um, uh, I had a handyman at my house years ago. I know the chick loves this. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, I'll never forget it. This guy was a very good handyman. Mm-hmm. And he hit his thumb with a hammer. <laughs> and he went, Mother Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> and it really stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> that he had, the, he had that in the bank. Yeah. Ready to go anytime. But you have to wonder. Like yeah. even like the Pope. If, you you just, know, if the Pope are doing some stuff around the Vatican, hits his thumb, you know he's going to do a string of Mary Mother. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mary Mother. <laughs> all, of them, all of them, I would say. Man. So uh, congratulations, Texas. Yeah. Uh, you win the, uh, the the cursing award. And um, I think it's uh, probably appropriate to play um, this one more time. You'll, you'll see why in oh. a second. <laughs> you know... Retirement just wasn't my style, so I began working nights down here as a janitor in this old office building. Yeah. <laughs> just to keep busy, I guess, because it pays below minimum wage. But anyway, oh, hey, there's the big cheese now. Rid, how you doing tonight? Hey, working uh, kind of late, aren't you? How you doing? Yeah, having a pretty tough night. Yeah, well, <sighs> good night. Night. Yeah, you gonna watch it? Gonna watch the game tonight? Yeah, I'm across the street. Free pizza at beer night over there. I've had a pretty tough day. I thought I'd just uh, watch the game with the fellows over at the bar. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I'm just going to listen to it on this old radio here. The antenna's kind of shaky. And I'm looking at a big I... screen color TV over there. It's the uh, best picture oh, I've ever seen. Yeah, Jeez. big screen color. Great picture. <laughs> I heard it is. Well, I'd sure like to be there. Well, you know, I got all my work done. And... Oh, really? You're, yes. you're all done? Yeah, you suppose maybe I could... Well, I'll tell you what, uh... Maybe I could well, I got my BMW in the garage. I got a Blaputnik radio in there. I can pick up the you can drive me anything. Up. No, no. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you my car keys. Why don't you clean out my car? I got a wicked clean stain it. in the back seat. Yeah, I've got some stuff <laughs> in the trunk and clean it up with. Uh, Simon it. I'll be back in about two hours, and I'll, maybe I'll bring you a piece of pizza. Okay, Dad? Well, Dad, listen, thanks two, a lot. I hear my keys, and uh, be two, careful not to scratch the car. And I'll be back in about two hours. Two okay? hours? Yeah, I've got to watch, watch the You're game. not going to bring... Well, you ungrateful. You, Esther said you were a worthless <laughs> second son of a... Hell, you, you can't be my son. Nobody's that ungrateful. You <laughs> breath. <laughs> I'll take your stained BMW and run that mother <laughs> right into the damn river. You, you worth nothing son gets of someone's a attention like a good dog. string of profanities. <laughs> Pig face. This message brought to you by the National Cursing Foundation. <laughs> and remember our motto go f yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, a little bit of cursing after our news story about Texas, number one cursing capital of the United States of America. Thank you, the Austin American statesman, for doing the research on that. Huh. Uh, good to know. What's your uh, go-to curse? Do you have one yeah, that's I, just I, always? I, yeah, it's, just, it's slips, the GD. Yeah. Got to be careful with that. I, yeah. I've kind of gotten away from that one. I, I, go, I go classic. Uh, the, the F. Yeah. Some variation of the F. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't, you know, Every just, time. I remember opening up my phone the other day, and there was an obituary for someone uh, that I really liked, and you know the celebrity type. Yeah, I don't really yeah. know though, and, and I'm like, God, you know, yeah, yeah, just slips out. That's what just comes first. How about you, Josh? Mm, boy, uh, I don't know what I use the most. Maybe you guys would know what I use the most. Mm. Huh. Uh, <clears throat> I'll drop an f bomb. A H yeah. maybe. Mm, maybe. Yeah, you seem to say that a lot lately. I do? About me. <laughs> yeah, you and, you and Pat were really going at it. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, if you would stop being such an AA. Yeah. Uh, Pat, what's your go-to uh, curse word? Well, you heard me the other day with the coffee, a string of them all in a row. Yeah. All the big ones. <laughs> Funny enough, yeah. But is there one of the big ones that... Well, yeah, okay. you burn yourself on the stove. Well, I'm trying to think. If I burn myself on the stove, what do I... Gosh darn! I I don't I think I've trained myself not to cuss that much. That's good. Huh? Well, I failed. Yeah, I, me too. I can't stop. <laughs> Bad. It was a, it was a real no no in my house, man. Yeah, when you were a kid, just starting to oh, oh God, no, no, not no, no. really using them. No, properly. I see. I never yeah. I never cursed in in no our kidding? house, but it's it's a free for all with my kids. Always has been. <laughs> like it, it's it, just. It, and it's yeah. also different mm-hmm. culture to culture. Remember, we had we had a guy in here from Australia. Mm-hmm. That used a particular word that you can't use on the radio here, right? And he goes, well, "That's on, on the air in Australia all the time." Mm-hmm. And then we used a word, and he goes, "Oh my God, I can't believe you used that." Yeah. So it, it mm. does differ. And if you've you've watched enough English television, yeah, the c word is, is all over the place. Yeah. Not a big deal. Pretty much not here. That's uh, 
That's, very, that's very, the big one. Very rare. <laughs> yeah, that's, women could learn to take a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I never use them unless I'm watching. I, the only time I ever use the C word is when I'm watching C-SPAN because, never mind. You call it, uh, <laughs> you call it, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. You know what? When you said never mind, I too should have said never mind. <laughs> Three feet. <laughs> I should have said A-H span. Oh, they cover the entire. Okay. Ace, you have a go-to? You don't curse at all, do you? I don't curse. Ever. No. Why not? Even when you're mad. That's the way I was raised. Oh. Really? That's the way I was raised, but I rebelled. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Let's, uh, let's, once again, I am a failure. Mm -hmm. All of our parents did a mm -hmm. decent job. We, we let them down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look right behind Ace... Look at that. That's that beautiful orangeinsoles.com kegerator. What am I talking about? It's a refrigerator, and it's about, I don't know, three feet high, and there's a tapper thing on the top because it's designed to hold kegs, three different styles of kegs, I have been told. The kegerator is from Orange Insoles. Speaking of Orange Insoles, are you kidding me? We've got uh, orange insoles uh, to put in our shoes. Joshy, tell me more. A lot of us have them in our shoes right now. It's spooky season, but what's really scary, that discomfort you're dealing with. Back pain, hip pain, knee pain, my gosh. If you work on your feet all day and you walk around with those shoes that have that useless, lame, thin liner inside, you're getting zero support. What are you doing? Go to orangeinsoles.com. If you're standing all day, especially, you're putting stress on that body of yours. Orange insoles offer arch support. They have that deep cup to properly support your heel and your feet and thusly your entire body because a strong foundation means a strong body. Heck, half the people in this building have orange insoles in their shoes. Now you should. Now, we don't have them in half our shoes. We don't have an orange insole in one shoe and not in the other. That would be <laughs> real silly, wouldn't it, Tom? Unless you had one leg. Yes, but but uh, <laughs> we fired that guy because he was uh, giving us the creeps. If the insole in your current shoe flops around, hey, freak, like you're gonna a, go get a Starbucks. A sad fish. You're not getting the support you need. Think of a table. It wobbles without proper support. So does your body. Head to orangeinsoles.com. There's free shipping. Plus, Orange Insoles comes with a 60-day "We Want You to Be Happy" guarantee. Also at orangeinsoles.com, you can take their new quiz. Answer a few simple questions. They'll ask you what your symptoms are, what shoes you plan to wear the insoles in, your shoe size, and you're going to get recommendations that are guaranteed to work. How easy is that? Also, one of the best things about orange insoles, no cutting. Some of those other insoles come, and you have to get the scissors out and size them. Yeah, and then, you, then, you, then you open them up, and it's got like 40 of them linked together <laughs> like you're doing some kind of a decoration for the Christmas tree. Yes! <laughs> That's no good. Not with orange insoles. No. They are true to size. Please, orangeinsoles.com. Check them out. See if they're right for you. All right. Thank you very much, Josh. When we come back, we have some cool stuff in the news. We have uh, the word impaled. Uh-oh. Mm. Uh, we have uh, Scotch news. Uh, we have uh, uh, mannequin news. And a cool Ozzy Osbourne story up next. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and I, uh, when we when we uh, decided to do this, I said, uh, Tom, we should do a uh, Tim Wilson song. And I, uh, this is really hard. Um, I practiced and practiced, and man, I sucked. <laughs> you just can't do a Tim Wilson song. So I uh, took liberties with some of Timmy's songs and, uh, and whipped a song together in uh, honor of Tim. Help me get through this, folks. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> he really loved his trailer park woman. Didn't care much for Dr. <laughs> Phil. I'm sure he started the church league fist fight. And his ass got tired of Shaquille O'Neal. A big white hat with a black six string guitar. Now the heavens have their newest star. Where 
Here's my jetpack, he would say. Now he's sporting wings. And he taught Jesus Christ the booty song. <laughs> we all thought he'd go to Chuck E. Cheese hell. But George Bush, George Strait, George Patton, and George Orwell. A hillbilly homeboy, I could be wrong. But I know he's tired of me singing this song. A big white hat with a black six string guitar. Now the heavens have their newest star. Oh, where's my jetpack? He would sing. Now he's sporting wings. And he asked Jesus Christ to join his band. They're singing Georgia, goodbye Georgia, Georgia, goodbye, Georgia, goodbye Georgia, Georgia, goodbye. Comfort. So you're just rolling around? Yeah. There are better options. You need to try Orange Insoles. Orange Insoles? Yeah, check those out. Proper support for your feet. You're gonna have arch yeah. support. It's got that deep heel cup. These do feel better. All right. Who needs you? Not me. Orange Insoles will help you feel better and do more guaranteed. Get your orange insoles today and step into a world of comfort. who nearly awarded him the gold medal oh. until it was learned that Leaken Sphincter was not entered in the event <laughs> or even on the team. <laughs> it seems that Johan was a spectator who had slipped and accidentally slid down the track at a record pace. <laughs> Leaken Sphincter <laughs> left his mark in Olympic history <laughs> as well as on the loose track itself. This has been another Bob and Tom Olympic moment in history. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Let's talk to our guest, Tom Foss. Now, uh, do you have any animals? Uh, I got a, two horses, about 15 chickens, dogs, cats. So you are in the country, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gravel road, one way gravel road. Really? Do you eat the chickens? No, the eggs. Ah. Oh, My eggs. wife said she'd never kill one of the chickens. Really? But she doesn't have any problems scrambling up the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. Uh -huh. wow. Comedian Dwight Slade. I think they're overdoing the ID for liquor. We ID under 65. Bring your walker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got carded the other day, and it's like, look into my eyes. You ever seen a 21-year-old with this much hate and bitterness in their eyes? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Let's not count the birthdays. Let's count the dark angels. Uh -huh. Oh, the people you. who think and cluck at the same time. <laughs> how, how does that work? You ask them a question. You go, hey, are we doing dinner tomorrow? Dinner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. What are you, an aborigine? Answer the question. <laughs> I want to go to dinner. You're hunting for Coke bottles. Let's go. <laughs> You know you're too high when you're eating cereal naked and your answer. girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. <laughs> That's how you know you're too high. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. This sure. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hi. There's Pat Godwin Sorry. in the performance room. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi, Chick. There's Ace Cosby. Chick. I'm Chick McGee. What are you doing now? And here's Tom Griswold. Uh-oh. What'd you do? Nothing. You bent over to get something. What was it? It looked like a hand sanitizer. If I told you, it would be disgusting. Oh, okay. All right. You got a booger and you put it in the trash can. <laughs> Q-tip. Am I right? You you took you Q-tipped your nose? You, <laughs> you better not say anything Tom, about digging in your nose. Shut up. It's disgusting. That's disgusting. Oh. Q-tips. Tom. How about that? And by might, the way, I'm, I've, I've, I've gone that. on record. Um, there are many things that they're, uh, what do you call it, generic versions of? Yes. The Q-tip has never been uh, improved. The name brand, I bought some off-brand Q-tips. I might as well have just bought golf pencils. Yeah. Well, you know, the ones you're holding aren't Q-tips, and those are pretty good. No, I bought these. They're Q-tips. Yeah, I'm a very loyal Q-tip. I, I, I bought Let me, No, the, the wooden ones aren't Q-tips. That's not what he has. Well, these, are, well, these are Q tips. I bought, are, a, that's I bought a, 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 a five hundred pack. Oh, I thought you. I were, think that I there's a better. I think there's a better cotton swab. Really? Yes. What's happening? And they're called. They're. They're. They are. They have wood sticks, and so they don't bend at all. Hmm. And they're called. I think they're called Swift Swiftners. Swifters. Okay. Those are I'll bring your, some in. Those are for your floor. No, it's not. It's the Q tips are great. Band-Aid is something I won't go generic on. I, think very, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Band-Aid, whatever they use, uh, amazing product. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't know why we're talking about this. Oh, I know, because you uh, so rudely pointed out my <laughs> private... Uh, why do you <laughs> wait and do that until you're getting ready to be introduced? Do you want to appear that you're so busy you... No, there was some activity going on I needed to take care of. Speaking, but in terms of being unprofessional, they had to cut out a giant chunk of you digging in your nose yesterday during the show for the replay later. I had a bat in the cave. What do you want? Then walk out into the okay, hall. Okay, maybe I will. I spent well, all my time no, out. No, 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 no. How long have you been sitting here? Yeah. 30 plus years. You're damn right. <laughs> you do whatever you want. I'm going to pick my ass if I want to. You have tenure. You got Thank that right. You. Uh, damn excuse right. me. I'll Speak. scratch my balls. I, 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 I can, I can you make the. You want to see it? Well, I, no, I, I can make a nice segue here. Oh, okay. Bat in the cave. Speaking of bats, <laughs> yeah. we have an Ozzy Osbourne story. We do. As soon as I find Ozzy, it. Oh. Now, is we'll he coming it. back with the uh, the oh, Osbournes? I saw them on doing a commercial. They've got a podcast. They, yes. Yeah. Um, so, People okay. Magazine reports Mr. Ozzy Osbourne has admitted that he used to urinate in his pants while on stage. Now, remember. That's old news. I been I was stating Ace this years says, ago. He says it's old. That's news. why they dumped the buckets of water yeah, on Ozzy because he had to pee his pants. He had no control. Ace knew all about it. I know, but I talked to you guys. Your guys going, no, he didn't. That's me. oh, I'd never heard you contend. I'd heard, always heard that, but I didn't know if it was true. Yeah, or I not. think there was always speculation, but he finally admitted to it. Okay, Are you the sure? seventy-four-year-old made the revelation during a recent episode of. The Osborne Podcast. Uh, I wonder what that sounds like. Ozzy. Ozzy. Very similar. Yes. Ozzy explained Careful. when. Oh, excuse me. I know. I I, I did. I read it. I forgot to do that. That's okay. When I was on stage, I used to go, "Oh, f it," and just. Piss. Tom thought you would just say that, just, I, by the way. I well, I he thought you would just read it. He thought yeah. he thinks that of all of us. Yeah, it's okay. I, they can't be trusted. I have to. If tell he them hadn't what stopped and said, "Be careful," you would have just said the F. That's exactly right. Well, that's because she gets I so about it. she gets so relaxed around here that you know, it's that's happened. I know. Yeah, no, it's happened to all of us. I, I haven't done it yet, so I'm he, really nervous. Uh, and the, when you do this you during the breaks, once. during the breaks, everything comes out. Yeah. And then, yes. and then when you get back, or oh, on the air, and sometimes you forget which is which. Except, except. Josh, for some reason, isn't cursing anymore, and I find that troubling. <laughs> no, no, it's still going to happen. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just trying to limit it. And Ace never has. My goal is to make Ace curse. Do you want to hear this? I heard Wait a Ace second. Curse oh, yeah. Can we pull away for no. just a second? This is actual audio from this show. What? 
starring Chick McGee. Listen very carefully. This was on the air recently. Here we go. Hard to believe guy wrote that. Wrote me and Julio down by the schoolyard or whatever the f That's supposed to be. Remember the days of the old schoolyard. Uh, yeah. we, we had to. We had that actually went over the air. And, we, it, uh, and it was seconds before he realized why all of you were laughing. That was hilarious. Yeah, I, I was. I was so disconnected yeah. and just talking. Yeah. I had no idea. I threw I was on my the air. arm out going uh, for the dump yeah. button. I had no idea. Uh, so no idea. the point is, Ozzy. Children burst into flames. Listen yes. to it. It's amazing. And I'm trying to remember something. Ace, did you go on stage with with uh, Ozzy and the holding the things? Was, I know Christy yeah, and I yeah, did and that. the monk thing. Yeah. We, oh, cool. Uh, Ozzy was on tour. He that came in cool. here. Oh, uh, the mad monk. Uh, 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 and uh, <laughs> he asked us to do this thing. So we go backstage, and then during one of his songs, which what, what, which one was it? Uh, Crazy uh, uh, Iron uh, 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 War Pigs. Uh, 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 but it, it was on the Ultimate Sin tour, so I so so mm -hmm. they put us in these monk robes, and they hand us these what do they call them scepters? Yeah. And then we, so he's on stage singing, and the audience is out there. And then in the middle of this thing. We're told when to go, and we walk up these stairs and solemnly walk up and down. And fun, yeah. So it was, it was really weird. And I all yeah. I remember is looking at Ozzy, had his shirt off, and he you was, were behind him, right? Yeah, and he was probably he was a little bit chunky at that time. I just <laughs> right. remember he had this huge zit uh. in his upper back. And I thought, God, that is just so <laughs> not rock and roll. Was it uh, pus? Or? <laughs> yeah, I, it was just oh. you know, like this pus wart. I, um, <laughs> in any event, yeah, Ozzy for years his. That was his next big hit. Puff. People that worked for him have admitted that <laughs> mm -mm. he was peeing in his pants, so they'd, they'd throw buckets of water on him. Yeah, and that was a part of his act, right? They just... But well, in he, words, he threw him on himself. He was like, well, yeah, but I mean... Didn't that, he also uh, say that he snorted a line of ants or something? Yeah. Isn't that the, mm -hmm. a real... Yeah, that's in the movie The, the Dirt, too, yeah. In the, the, the crew yeah, movie. In, the, in the basement of the Alamo. That's right. <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> no. I think that's a Pee Wee Herman movie. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't pee in my pants anymore. I like to pee in other people's pants. That's you much, do. That's much funnier. It's a, it's a gift. <laughs> By hey. the way, <laughs> you know, Jess has uh, been uh, coming on, uh, and we haven't had a chance to ask you this question. Have you ever uh, pooped your pants? Mm. Come on, make make two listeners' day. <laughs> days. Oh, they, because Tom says it all the time, that, that he poops his pants all the time. I don't poop my pants all the time. I admit it, I had an issue once. I, no, you, no, you've more than once. Be <laughs> honest. I had to jettison my underwear. There was a, you keep aluminum foil in your car. No, you've I don't. So no, no, I just I happen to have some with me. It's never I happened can, I can me. tell you a close, the closest call I've ever had, but okay. I didn't do it. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> hemp seed protein for the first oh, time okay and uh it it there it, i mean it was it was a mi it was minutes it was minutes <laughs> your body went not yes for me. yes hemp exactly protein yeah wow. yeah so if you're ever looking to yeah, there's okay. some clean things yeah. out yeah Ooh. so but other than that no that's no. why woody harrelson has always seen sprinting towards bathroom <laughs> <laughs> well when we come back we'll we have a little aussie tribute for you whatever you say poopy uh, fans. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the... Um, this is Josh is going to turn around. One of your originals. <laughs> Josh, yeah. just take your phone and do it this way. I'll turn around. <laughs> You're going to hurt your neck. I can just see it now. You'll show up like Ted Kennedy at Mary Joe Capecni's Josh, funeral. you don't have to. It's like he's at a movie. <laughs> he's going to have the big neck brace on. Yeah, isn't this weird for you? When I yeah, see, now that you say it, now that, now that you've actually turned around, now it's kind of weird, isn't it? Is, isn't he new since we were here the last time? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't remember him. <laughs> I'm pretty forgettable. I, <laughs> I noticed you wore red so the devil could find you first. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea that's how it worked. Yeah, yeah, see, this is okay, um, uh, what's this tune called? Okay, that seems so to be what you asked for. Okay, good. <laughs> what is that? Um, uh, yeah, this is a completely original song, and um, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Leonard Skinner, but uh, apparently we resemble the guy. So okay. every time we play this, we're like, hey, Leonard Skinner. And we're like, no, we're the electric comic. <laughs> but uh, you guys want to try it? Sure.
It goes a little something. Well, Ronnie wore big hats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did. I, I don't know, Ronnie. <laughs> that reminds me of one of the other times we were here when that little fella with the gun said he was going to sue us because he was wearing a hat on stage long before Weeper. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, sadly, that's a true story. Uh, and yep. then he stole a light bulb and left. Oh, yeah. boy. Okay. Tell you about that later. Boy, would yeah. you look at the time. <laughs> See the camera, but Christy just—I just, have very. Like she was small getting hands. ready to eat a giant Subway sandwich. <laughs> right, yeah. right. 
Yeah, by the way, Christy, I, I think maybe the reason it's been a while since you had a date is if that's your standard, <laughs> we're going to need a horse. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No. Did you see her hands? Yeah, yeah. She, 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 is, a, she is very a, well like for she herself. Holding she, up, she was about to drop whatever she was imagining because the grass was so wide. I was thinking of it. a sausage roll. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, Not okay. a penis. Well, all right. Show us how you hold the penis. Do the penis hold, Christy. Now we're going to get rested again. Stop. It. Depends on if it's one hand or two. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and the sign said anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, Hey, what gives you? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Bobcat Gold. And Reinbold. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Jess Hooker at the news desk. Hello. Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Possibly a number. Sure. <laughs> There's Josh Arnold. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Uh, I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. <laughs> the topic was Ozzy Osbourne. Yes. He um, recently stated, uh, People Magazine wrote about it. He has finally said, yes, indeed, I did pee in my pants on stage. And he would pour water all over himself. Um, and uh, we've been, Ace told me about this years ago. But um, uh, I thought uh, I would feature something following a recent interview with Ozzy. I, I believe this is completely self-contained. Uh, the important thing is this is actually the uh, the voice of the uh, real Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne. So um, well, here, we just give it a listen. What if Ozzy was ordering a pizza? <laughs> so at first we were going to have uh, Dean, our producer, do his famous Ozzy voice. Mm -hmm. But then uh, clear heads prevailed, and we decided to actually have Ozzy by taking actual parts of the interview. <laughs> right. And then intercutting them with uh, Mike Mark from our staff, pretending to be the uh, pizza delivery. So this is actually Ozzy's voice. Is that is that clear enough that I may? Okay. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. Paparazzi Pizza, can I take your order? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, uh -huh. I'm just in the color. Uh, okay. There's a line, line to right. go on. And we just got uh, to the Mad Monk. Meat lover. Right. Yeah, going to be about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So good. Now, during that interview, oh, man. I um, I attempted to uh, keep going. Everyone else in the room was ducking under the table because they were <laughs> laughing so hard because they couldn't understand a word he was saying. But in our defense, that's only the second time that's ever happened. When we talked to the lady in Dildo, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Yeah, we. Mm. That also that happened at that so time, funny. and then with Ozzy. Yeah, well, twice. In any or, event, uh, Ozzy has said that he he peed his pants on stage. I, I used to pee in my pants. Hmm. Right, why'd you stop? I, I still do, I, but I used to also. Oh, okay. Yes. So yeah. I, yeah. No, oh, really? I, I don't regularly pee in my pants. Of course not. Um, <laughs> and I'm still an Ozzy fan. Oh yeah. Well, it depends. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh. Walked right into that, didn't Depends. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Uh, Jess Hooker has to leave in a couple minutes, so let's squeeze in a story or two, young lady. A man who pretended to be a mannequin in a shop has been charged with theft. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Polish police say that the 22-year-old suspect went unnoticed by staff and shoppers as he stood motionless in the window of a store in Warsaw. I, I say, say give him. I say give him the stuff. I think so too. Yeah, he, went, he, he committed. <laughs> Polish police? Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah. Okay. okay. How many police did it take to arrest him? <laughs> well, half of them were bowling. <laughs> it was their bowling night, so they weren't on duty. Uh, yeah. Officials <laughs> said that when the man. Felt safe, he robbed the store of jewelry. <laughs> the 22-year-old is accused of going into various department stores and taking mer merchandise after closing time. Police said that the man was eventually caught by security. You ever, ever been around one of those guys that can do that? Um, yeah, and then they scare you. We went to, uh, we were in Hollywood, California as a kid, and that happened to me. And they jumped. Like, oh. They looked like a statue. He was the yeah, that, one that was yeah, all, That's amazing. Looked like cement, yeah. Right. Hmm. That would never, I could never, I can't hold still anyway. <laughs> you, you can't know, hold even, still. Even when I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, but really? when, they, when they arrested the guy, they said, uh, don't move or we'll shoot. <laughs> he wasn't moving. You see, do you still, uh, <laughs> do you still snore? I don't know. I don't, don't ask me. You're, <laughs> you're probably overdue he for doesn't. A, a sleep study or something. Oh, thank you, you Pat. I, 
<laughs> he's, he's, well, he you, sleeps so beautifully. Not, not when I'm spooning Like a baby. With you. Yeah, it's like a yeah. baby. That's sweet. You know, I recently saw a bunch of people standing motionless in a store. Oh, yeah? yeah they were the employees. Uh, hello. <laughs> Work ethic. Hey, what did you used to be? I, mean, <laughs> I, I lift a finger. Could you pull yourself away from your phone so I could pay for this? <laughs> sorry to bother you. But, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. What else have you got, Jess? Chicky, good news. Okay. Amazon is testing prescription delivery by drone. Here we go. I don't approve of this. <laughs> Zing. Customers in College Station, Texas, can now get prescription medication delivered by a drone within an hour of placing their order. That's perfect, uh, Tessa. They're not a, a big college town there. That's perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the drone programmed to fly from a delivery center with a secure pharmacy will fly to the customer's address, descend to the height of about 13 feet, and drop a padded package. Amazon says customers will be able to choose from more than 500 medications, but not controlled substances. Ah. It, may, it makes sense. Makes sense. I don't know. What's the problem? You're going to have various junkies trying to intercept your prescriptions, <laughs> hoping it's uh, something that they can get high on when it turns out to be your hemorrhoid cream. Junkies uh, are trying to hijack the medicine what, drones. The so fears they have... of a, an Andy Rooney type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, there something, is there something you'd do different where you would call them different? Porch pirates are the ones that take the stuff off your porch. Oh, so what yeah. would you call the people that that Sky. stole the, uh, yeah, yeah, tried to intercept the drone. Drone druggies? <laughs> Fly, flyer felons. I, Sky I, thieves. I have uh, to think about it. I, I, I mean, I like this that. is, we don't need, this. we're getting everything all the time too quickly. Yeah, but this is prescriptions. This is okay. No, but they're testing with prescriptions. Pretty no. soon it'll be, There's hey, some, Alexa, my wife's taking her clothes off. Uh, Viagra stat. There are some people Good. who, who uh, don't. Uh, especially in prescriptions, the area of prescriptions can't make it to the drugstore. I mean, this, this is, is a good. This so is so a, they so they have to the cra godsend. they have to crawl out to their lawn and, well, your <laughs> your well, Viagra landed <laughs> in a pile of Duffy's dog poop. Oh, they could probably make it out there. <laughs> to the lawn. I mean, odds are if they they're not if, an if, iron if lung. They, okay. If they dropped it in the Chick McGee backyard, yeah, fifty fifty chance it hits a pile of steaming. Fresh dog fecal construction. And you know what? They'd be proud to land in that drop <laughs> from those lovely puppies. The good thing about this, Tom, you don't have to use it when this service becomes widely available. You know, he no. brings up a good point. A lot of this stuff that you get upset at, <laughs> like new movies, you would you don't have to go see new movies. You can movies. leave yourself out of it. Yes, leave yourself out of it. I've got daughters Stay I have home to home and complain this. about something else. Uh, <laughs> yes. Should I watch I Barbie this weekend? It's I'm, awful. It's on, uh, it's on the TV. I want to watch it. I got a real kick out of it. It's I, like 20 bucks or something. But Tom I, didn't I care for care. it. Uh, yeah. Christy didn't care for it. It, it. You just can't wait for it to stop. I haven't. I, I, uh, I, thought, I thought it was really fun. I haven't watched it. So Mar I don't know. Maren loved it. And, uh, of course Pat, he did. It. It's Pat all about it. being politically correct. <laughs> it's, it's not. Yes, yes. I'm and, the most and, politically and, correct and person the, in the world. And, and the, the final <laughs> joke is so obvious and lame. The final joke is not obvious. Isn't it, there a sweet mother-daughter story, too? It's in, it's surprisingly emotional. Somebody said that, yeah. <laughs> it stinks. Chicken, okay. let me know when you uh, order that. I can come over and we can watch it together. Okay, yeah. I can't wait for that not to happen. And so, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, so I'm you're in, you're in favor of little drones flying all over neighborhoods dropping... Yeah, but I won't use it because all my stuff that I use is high test, baby. They can't Strong. <laughs> let that out of their sight. Aren't there drug stores that already have delivery... Absolutely. Well, no, you can get mail order delivery. Yeah, mail order I mean, pharmaceuticals absolutely. is huge. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I've got to get my enema bag by two. Oh, they'll drone it over. Good. I'd rather yeah. have that than a. What's right. what's? How is that worse than a truck? They, mm -hmm. They're all these things flying around the neighborhood. It's not going to be like that. They're not going to be like birds. You're, you were the you were the guy who started the domino theory in Vietnam, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you came up well if they get uh, South Vietnam, you know they're coming for <laughs> Washington D.C. Right? That was you. I just don't think it's necessary. We've got to slow the world down a little bit. It's not necessary for uh, some some stuff. Pharma this makes sense. This is the good thing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. What's the name of the actor in It's a Wonderful Life? <laughs> James Stewart. No. <laughs> That's oh, the old guy? One the of the Barry Boys? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. You, you Lionel? You once called me a bitter old man. <laughs> you know what? Everything is moving too fast. <laughs> I, I, my Adderall got yes. here before I even hit enter on my keyboard. Some people can't take the high pace of the modern times. Everything, they got themselves in a hurry, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. who you sound like. Sorry. Progress, brother. I don't know if it's progress. <laughs> this is good. I, yeah. I, uh, yeah. This is a good There's thing. There's no control Plus, stuff coming it, down. It Senior keeps, citizens. Keeps then people, they have to go out to their lawn to get it. <laughs> keep, how did you break your what hip? You, get how off you break my your lawn. Hip? How'd you it. break your hip, Uncle Clarence? Well, I was going out. It's a shorter trip than to the mailbox for their mail order pharmacy. What yes. halfway? You are, yeah, I, I don't believe you're upset about this at all. <laughs> Meet me halfway. <laughs> you, it keeps them out of the pharmacy and out of your way. How about that? <laughs> when you're in there looking for <laughs> Wait that's a minute. true. Metamucil. I never true. thought about that. You sold them. Keeps in line. It keeps this jackass off the road. Get to my stool softener. I got in my bag. I didn't know you needed a prescription for that. Coming up, and I think it's jagged. And we're gonna have drones all over the sky. I'm just saying. We're not gonna be able to see the sun anymore for the drones. It's horrible. Half a ten, yeah. You lunatic. I just don't think it's necessary. You know what you are? You are a lovable lunatic is what hey, you well, are. That's very kind of you. We need a T-shirt. Okay. Lovable lunatic. And right. what, what other T-shirt was that? Did we want to? Uh, you know, I don't know. It's just they're never going to happen. And so uh, you said it, we could have it by the end of the day, yep. something like that. Yeah. What's that? Whatever T-shirt you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can get them instantly now. Oh, uh, unfunny. It was about you. Oh, what did he say? Oh. That's right. That's Defining right. Defining unfunny. unfunny. Yes. Oh, that Defining was it. Yeah. I, I did enjoy it. One, uh, one bad joke. I, I have to wear one, too. Uh, no, I, enjoy, I liked no, it, Tom. It was funny. There's, Defining unfunny. Uh, now, two, uh, two bad jokes. Uh, we have uh, some cool stuff coming up. But first, this portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by Better Help. You feel like your brain's getting in the way of well, your yeah, own The drone delivered self. my therapist to me. It was horrible. Uh, this portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by BetterHelp. So uh, if your brain's getting in the way of your uh, of your brain, maybe it's time to slow things down a little bit. And uh, that's where therapy comes in. And BetterHelp is taking advantage of contemporary technology, the stuff that we all use all the time. Now can be used in the world of therapy by doing everything online the way I'm talking about it. Of course, it starts with a brief questionnaire. Then you'll get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. The key to this is the therapy itself is done online. It can be done uh, with the chat session, typing back and forth, or with a Zoom session where you're on camera, or like you're on the phone, just talking back and forth. That's the beauty of better help. It's incredibly convenient. That's the key to all this. And um, maybe you're you're not comfortable being in the same room with a therapist, and this way you can have a, a much bigger comfort zone to uh, check out therapy. It may be for you. Make your brain your friend again with better help. Visit BetterHelp.com slash BT Show today to knock 10% off that first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show to get on your way to being your best self. In this portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by BetterHelp. Coming up, we have more cool stuff in the news, and uh, that would include a scotch whiskey and a cool story about Miami University in Ohio. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Morning laughter. Awkward situations. I feel like um, recently in D.C., I, I threw up in the street, uh, which isn't a, a big deal. That happens. I'm a pretty heavy drinker. But uh, <laughs> what was different about this time was as I was about to throw up, you know, when you're when you're yeah. just starting to come up, I made eye contact with a woman sitting outside of a Starbucks. Yeah. And then I held eye contact as I vomited. Oh. <laughs> so oh, it was just very amazing. awkward because she just saw me kind of look over at her and then go. Bleh! 
<laughs> and uh, I mean, did what's you, going uh, on in her reality? You know, does she, she you, wants uh, to watch that? Did she get her didn't get her number? I did not get her number. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid. You. What does she go home no, and did. say? I was so ugly today, I made a man vomit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her to think that. You know. <laughs> so I had to go over and tell her it wasn't oh, the man. case. That's a bad hair day. <laughs> yeah, that's. If, you're, if a man looks at you and vomits, <laughs> it is a bad day. You need you need to visit your hairdresser <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Uh, T.J. Miller is our guest. Killer, yeah, right? it really is. Yeah, but I, I, get, yeah, I, I get into stuff like that See, all See, I'm the time. a sympathy monitor. I would have, if he had made eye contact with me, I would have. I would have me too. You would vomit also? I would so join when, you. Yeah. So when you smell vomit, oh, oh, yes. you immediately oh, vomit. Oh, well, say let's, goodbye. Let's, let's, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've covered soiling ourselves and vomiting. Vomiting. Uh, what show. next? All right, yeah. let's go into pussy lesions. No. <laughs> no, Bob, that's wrong in the script. It's not pronounced. Pussy. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's read that way. way. You know, it looks that way wow. on the page. Yeah. You know, if you read that wrong at the uh, audition, yeah. wow, that's a different movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's entirely. This, Mr. Abrams, I don't it's understand. Much closer to a Mr. Skin film. Yeah, yeah I think so. I would say. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, now, were you a big drinker in college? Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 in college, I think I, I, I drank a little bit more than I, I do now. I, well, whenever. I, in college, whenever I drank, I would pass out. It was like my thing, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. That's how people knew me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, pass out guy. Yeah, it got to the point where even before I went out, I'd go ahead and draw a dick on my face. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was gonna happen. It was gonna eventually. happen. Yeah. Your buddies were gonna take care of it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just take it right. Oh now. boy, you know. Yeah. It, Why wait? It, was, right. it really is something else. I see. I don't. I, I'm really. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not. Oh, that's because it, first of all, what do they think it's gonna help? me? Me, you know, they yeah. think years from now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be saying, yeah, it got really bad, you know, I was just drinking all the time, passing out, and then. Uh, one day I woke up, looked in the mirror, and I was like, TJ, get it together. I <laughs> owe it all to Steve and his artistic ability to draw a ball sack on my forehead. <laughs> hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. I, I did a show at this dance club. I don't know if you can tell by looking at me. I don't like to dance. <laughs> the lady running the show, she was like, why don't you shake what your mama gave you? I was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to shake scoliosis and a low self-esteem, but <laughs> there were black lights everywhere in that venue, on stage and backstage where I'm standing. And I was just doing the normal pre-show check and I had a, a stain on my pants right here. I know, I felt the same way. Uh, What had happened was, uh, you know when you put your pants in the washer and you dump the soap in, it all landed right here, and that shows up under a black light. I didn't know that, and neither did anybody else. Because I was on stage and everybody was like, oh man, that is a lot. It was a capful. It was a lot. Uh, that's two loads. So, if you think that's a dirty joke? It's because you're a dirty person. It's a laundry joke. It's a clean joke. So, hey, it's Josh, and of course, hi, Chick McGee, everybody. Your chance to win a Mini Max Big Green Egg for Bob and Tom and Big Green Egg. Each week, someone will win a Mini Max Big Green Egg. It's the Bob and Tom Show Big Skin Pick, empowered by the Big Green Egg. Go to bobandtom.com slash contest on the computer. And- <laughs> Is that where you go? Are we eligible?
back to the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> Pat Godwin in the performance room. There's Josh Arnold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. Chick. There's Ace Cosby. That looks great. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Hi, Tom. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Uh, Jess Hooker had to step out. Yes, sir. She's stepping out. That's anybody, a great song. Great anybody song. remember that? Great song. Anybody? Uh, Joe Jackson. Uh, Joe Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Oh. Stepping out. He had, he had that great song. Is she really going out with him? Is she really, Is she gonna, really gonna take him home oh, tonight? Great song. Um, so I'll read this. Look over there. Where? There. That is yeah. fun, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, is, but she is stepping out and hit number two. Um, we have this little <laughs> special treat coming up in a matter of moments. Uh, but, uh, and oh, wait a minute. It looks like it's blinking. There Woo! it is. My goodness. Mr. Oske, what's hey, happening? Hey, J.O. Hey, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? Hi, Jeff. I, I see eyeballs on your necktie. I, uh, I got a new tie. Uh, listener, um, Karen Sue sent this in to me for my birthday last week. It's a little uh, frog tie. It's got oh. cute froggies on. Why don't we? Why don't we ask our listeners to send you a new tie every week? Uh, yeah, well, that's that's well, what I'm trying to get going. In case you hadn't noticed that, uh, I had but... noticed it until you <laughs> you underscored it by stating it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, hold it. So it's a little. It's a tie with little frog eyes on it, huh? Yeah. All right. How do you yeah. make it make that sound? Yeah. Uh, I have a. Uh, <laughs> Bullfrog on my soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just <laughs> presses the belly of the frog. That's yeah. nice. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll post. We'll post instructions. How and to send I don't know if you, you saw this. I'm going with a full Windsor knot today, so I mean business. Yeah, you do. All so. right. Oh, uh, before we get started, I'm Jeff Hoske. Uh, we give you a lot of the news each week. We don't give you all the news, so I'm here to give you the news that we failed to mention. Now here's Jeff Hoske with what you failed to mention news. Pew 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 pew. Uh, the uh, failed to mention news desk is once again. Sponsored by Slim Pickens, the clothing store for those small in stature. Shopping for an old anorexic <laughs> aunt or a hard-to-buy-for bulimic in your life, then Slim Pickens is for you. Oh, Sign up now for our No Chub Club to receive 1% <laughs> off your first order. At Slim Pickens, we only have one rule. No fatties. <laughs> no fatties. Uh, last week, you talked about how senior citizens are more sexually active than ever. What you failed to mention, that's why they eat so early, so they can get back to the room for boning. No. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, last week after my performance, I got a lot of letters from uh, paramedics and doctors uh, saying that I was breathing way too heavily after running down the hall to kiss chick and I should go see a, a medical professional right away. Mm -hmm. Well, you failed to mention, in my defense, I was running uphill in each direction. Uh, <laughs> now, now I, I, I know that sucked, uh, but Fair and enough. I do have this written down because this did happen. I ran this joke by my lady last night to see if it made sense. She said, and I quote, that's not a joke, that's just sad. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa. <laughs> Pew. <laughs> All right. A flock of seagulls shut down a Venice airport last week. What you failed to mention, the closest thing I've ever experienced to that was uh, the one time I was on a flight and I got diverted after Holland Oats got drunk and tried <laughs> rushing the cabin. As <laughs> so, opposed to a flock of seagulls. Oh, yeah, both <laughs> great bands of Hall and Oates. Oh, if anybody it. was going to yeah. do that, it'd be Hall and Oates. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. I love those guys. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of frogs... Uh, female frogs play dead to avoid sex. We learned that. Well, you failed to mention uh, daddy frogs over here uh, going, uh, no, I didn't say I wanted you to croak on it. <laughs> oh. oh, maybe yeah. this one. Uh, or uh, here's a backup. Uh, there's a new species of female frog that play dead when they want to get out of having sex. What you failed to mention, a move perfected by my ex-wife. <laughs> I was going to say, no difference between frogs and women. So, oh. yeah. uh, earlier this week, Tom was inquiring about the uh, pixelating uh, genitalia in Japanese porn. Mm. Uh, what you failed to mention, I had a listener write to me from Japan who watches our show on the YouTube. Uh, he wrote in and said, apparently when he watches our show, uh, they pixelate out Tom. 
That's weird. That's offensive to my boss. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, the lack of charging stations in some parts of the country has resulted in uh, charging confrontations between EV owners trying to get a charge. Well, you failed to mention, uh, there's probably a lot of, uh, how dare you? And, uh, Oh, come on, man. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of fisticuffs taking place. <laughs> I've never understood the big deal with EVs. I drove an EV from eighth grade all the way through my senior uh, year of high school when I worked across the street at the country club. Uh, but back then, we weren't all pretentious. We just called them golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Chick yesterday talked about the old hole-in-the-pocket trick where perverted dudes cut a hole in their pocket <laughs> so they can touch their junk in public without <laughs> anyone knowing. That's uh -huh. right. Yeah. Uh, what you failed to mention, uh, rumor is Tom cuts a, has to cut a hole in a sock. Ooh. <laughs> a hole? Is that right, Tom? Oh. So it's way down there, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I do Pilates so I can access it. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, finally yesterday, Chick uh, once again was talking about how Tom finds all these poo-related stories, <laughs> and a chick never comes across a single one of them, and he wants to know uh, how that's possible. Uh, what you failed to mention, well, chick, when your Google alerts are Deuces Wild, Dookie, Copperphilia, Dookie Rope, Fudge Fountain, Cleveland Steamer, John Mayer, Chuck Berry, Poo Canoe, Fecophilia, Tornado, Shark, Log Cutter, Doo Doo Butter, Bum Crumbs, Tar Biscuit, Hot Carl, Mississippi Mud Boat, Scatastrophe, Brown Betty, Skid Marks, and Cordon Poo. You're going to see those kind of articles. You're going to see this game. This has been the news that we. What you failed to mention. Jeff Oskin. Thank Gordon you, Jeff. Poo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll have to uh, uh, post a how to send Jeff a tie. We'll get that organized and put it on the various social media platforms. Josh, got a letter for you. Okay. We had a news story that uh, Texas is the uh, number one state for cursing mm -hmm. uh, based on a scientific survey. And uh, we were asking everybody what their favorite curse word was. Yes. And you really couldn't come up with one. And then I received this letter. And uh, sometimes we're just too close to it, and we, we don't see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're right here, and it's, it's right there, but we're not seeing it because we're too close. Um, you uh, can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you're in the forest, you can't see the forest. Oh, I'm, oh I forget how it goes. Uh, this right. is from a trucker named Paul. Hi, Paul. And uh, he uh, has a, an audio way that we can access Josh's uh, favorite, uh, favorite curse word, and here we go. I've got, got 99 problems, problems but a bitch ain't one for Bitch. Bitch. You can rely on the old man's money. It's a bitch, girl, but it's gone. Bitch. Bitch. The bitches. Bitch. Bitch. There we go. Thank you very much, Paul. I certainly out, did uh, forget about that. I'll yeah, that's, that's the one. I throw that around rather liberally. Oh, oh, very oh, good. Very good. Uh, now. Um, we had an, an interesting Ohio story earlier today. And here's another one. This is kind of a fun story. Okay. Uh, a little bit of confusion, and I totally get this. Um, this involves Miami University in Ohio. Oxford, Ohio, yes. Um, an international student who thought she was going to be moving to Florida to go to college in the United States was disappointed to learn <laughs> that Miami University is in Ohio. Yes. Um, yes. Her, she's Ms. Valerie Doe. Doe! She yeah. lives in Vietnam. And uh, she was interviewed by The Insider when they found out she was excited at the prospect of enjoying the beaches of Florida while attending what she thought was the University of Miami. Oh, man. Uh, she was unable to, uh, to, to visit the university while applying, and so she was confused when her acceptance letter came from Ohio. She says, now I realize there are no beaches there. It's a cornfield in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest of America, she describes it. It's but a, she has accepted the offer. It's a gorgeous part of the state. And she will be going to Miami University because they have a good business school, she says. Okay. So her priorities are the schooling. Yeah. Good. Uh, apparently, she won't be majoring in geography, I'm guessing. But uh, the good news is uh, she's an international student, and she's only a few hours away from London. Oh, yeah, that'll uh, maybe oh. she'll be disappointed with London, won't she? What is she, about two right. hours from uh, Oxford? Uh, two and a half, maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah absolutely. Good, yeah. Um, there's a lot of confusion. Do you have a, oh. uh, do I hear a chord in there? Yes, I do. 
Where's the beach and pink flamingos? Oh, no. I thought this was FLA. <laughs> no palm trees, where'd the heat go? It's Miami, Ohio. Oh, no, I say. Gotta get out of here. <laughs> this ain't no Florida town. I would have been tan long ago. This is the Midwest. They're planting corn in the ground. How you can survive in this cold, I don't know. Four years in Ohio. <laughs> Four years in Ohio. I come from Vietnam. That's ironic, don't you know? <laughs> Neil, Young, Neil Young sang about Ohio in the 70s years ago. Four years in Ohio. How many more? Four years in Ohio. I'll get my master's in Lima. That's in Peru. <laughs> Son of a... That's Ohio, too. Four years in Ohio. How many more? Oh, that is uh, disrespectful and at the same time, but very funny. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Of course, Lima, Ohio, the reference there at the end. Um, there's also a mile in Michigan. We got them all. There's a Russia, Ohio. Uh, yeah. Spelled Russia. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's um, Houston, Houston. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Miami, great school in Oxford, Ohio. Yeah. Great school. Uh, now, we, uh, we turn back to the news desk and... It's, it's Tom Griswold. It's it's me. Yes, with the news. Uh, Don't act like this isn't what you want. <laughs> yeah. Your dream what, come true. What a surprising, wonderful <laughs> thing this is. Now, um, remember the story we had yesterday about the guy that um, he was um, arrested and they found drugs on him and he said, those aren't my pants. I'm wearing... <laughs> yes. yes. Okay, here's another pants story in the news. This time, uh, a thief caught uh, in Illinois... Uh, police are looking for a suspect who allegedly stole hard drives from a Best Buy store by stuffing the devices down his trousers. Mm. The Lincoln Police Department said the man entered the store and put 11 hard drives in his clothes before 11. leaving. Wow. 11 hard drives. That's, uh... Now, granted, they have gotten smaller, but... Sure. Yeah, wow. That's, uh... I wonder where he probably put the flash drives up the old keister. <laughs> boy, oh, they're, boy. They're, they're sort of thumb-like. They probably just, fit there. You <laughs> just can't help it, can you? <laughs> uh, oh, good luck, sir. Uh, they'll probably be catching this guy. Um, now, here's one. Um, this is a world record. Do you have the music? I do have the world record music. Stupid world record. Here this, he is now. This really creeps me out. Sorry, a South American couple has broken their own Guinness World Record for the most body modifications on a married couple. Oh, really? This is just hideous. Piercings and horns and all yeah, the uh, gauges. And a man named Victor Hugo Peralta and his wife Gabriella. Victor Hugo? What? They call themselves the Cherubs of Hell. The Cherubs of Hell? <laughs> They've held the record since 2012. They're 53 years of age. They um, are? Yeah, they've added even more uh, modifications to their old record, combining for a total of 91 body modifications. Here's a little something for you. Uh, Victor's uh, tongue is split. Oh, boy. His eyeballs are tattooed. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. He has extensions on his earlobes. They have mm. been expanded. Um, and he has uh, star implants. And cartilage cuts in his ears. How about that? Gabriella has eye tattoos, um, pointed ears, oh. and implants on her hands and foreheads. Gracious. They they certainly are something. Yeah. For Halloween, they're going to dress like normal people. <laughs> <laughs> we're, bu we're business folk. <laughs> that is, that just, this really creeps me out. Well, at least they found each other. That's nice. I guess so. that's true. But man. How do they get through airport security? Oh. <laughs> uh, they probably can't. They have to do they make you take that junk out when you go through? I don't, oh, know. I, don't, I don't think so. They must make some sort of, uh, holy cow, they are really tatted up and really, really uh, modified. That's for sure. Yeah. Man. Yeah, so. That's hard to look the at. The cherubs of hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most common, I think. The cherubs of hell. Uh, married body modification is gaining a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> I think that probably is. <laughs> You know, some people get very large. <laughs> <laughs> very, very large. Uh, uh, coming up, uh, we have um, 
uh, our history lesson for everybody, which is very exciting today. But right now, I want to talk about seasonality. I'm a big fan, as you know. Uh, there's a time uh, for each season, which we seem, to, we seem to be ignoring in contemporary culture, but not at HelloFresh. Just turn the HelloFresh card over. Turn, turn, turn. They know that uh, the f best fresh food right now is the, f is the fall menu. So they've got a great fall menu with their special quick and easy options, including these famous 15-minute uh, meals. So it takes less time than even delivery to put some of this stuff together. Every week, more than 40 recipes to choose from at HelloFresh. How does it work? HelloFresh does the shopping. They do the measuring. They send you the card that shows you what goes where. You throw it together, and you've got great restaurant-quality food. And again, 40 choices every week. So we're we're talking about everything from vegan over this way to just classic comfort food over that way. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. So join America's number one meal kit today and learn about seasonality. By the way, freshness is the key. And get 50% off plus free shipping if you use the code 50BTSHOW. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50BTSHOW. Once again, it's 50 BT Show, HelloFresh.com slash 50 BT Show. Coming up, a little bit of history. I want to remind you uh, real quick to go to BobandTom.com slash contest if you'd like to win the kegerator over there, courtesy of Orange Insoles. And don't forget to check while you're at BobandTom.com slash contest if you want to upgrade or uh, update your entries to win week seven in our special pigskin competition to win the Big Green Egg Mini Max. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thank you. part of the team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar, peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it type two peanut goo. But... <laughs> yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 11.30 at night. You shove the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think you ate the rubber band that holds a legs out. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go off the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. Okay, these kids. They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a Jif sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's a uh, we're talking with uh, comedians Mark Klein and Nick Griffin. Nick, anything new in your life? Any uh, well, no. I mean, I'm just out there, you know, trying to make it work. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you got to try to enjoy yourself. Obviously, I, you know, I'm... Uh, you know, I'm a positive guy, very optimistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've noticed that. That's <laughs> what I like about you. Yes. I feel Is this like, your New Year's uh, resolution? Yeah, I feel uh -huh. like, you know. 2010's your year. No, I just, I, I need to be more realistic, and mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, um, you got to enjoy yourself in the moment, because, you know, in an hour, a day, a week, it's, you know, it's all going to suck again. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's life, right? Good, sucky, good, sucky, mm -hmm. sucky, sucky, sucky. You say that in Japan, you're going to have a great time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, uh, mm -hmm. It's just hard adjusting to the sucky part of life because when you first get to Earth, everything's sweet. You know, when you're a baby, mm -hmm. everyone's kissing your ass, hugging you, feeding you. And then <laughs> <laughs> boom, acne, erections, calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, what's wrong? And my back is sore, my legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I, I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. See All you right. later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! 
I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, Orange Insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh! Josh! Did you get Orange Insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to Orange Insoles, I feel great. Terrific! <laughs> See me. you later. <laughs> Orange Insoles. Feel better, do more. Today, a little bit of a, uh, <laughs> little bit of an issue, something a little minor. I'd, uh, Christy has a new boyfriend. She's uh, officially announced um, the uh, arrival of her new boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah, you just, just got here. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, she Russia. ordered him online. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean he's, he's, you've been seeing this guy, and now suddenly it's uh, okay. We're oh, we can go with it. Yeah, we're going, we're going with it. It's official. And the reason we had to go out and go with it is because this guy's name is Tom. Mm -hmm. My name. Mm -hmm. And there was some confusion name. behind the scenes. Christy, be telling me. I'm the only one named. I'm the original Tom. Well, no, but Christy was you know telling stories. Go well, this weekend. Tom and I did something, and she would you know, and have to tell about some exotic adventure. Clarify. Had, and I'd have that to clarify because, that I. Mm -hmm. did it. I had no part of this. There and has been some speculation on the show that Tom and I might be seeing each other. This mm -hmm. Tom, but it's not. It's not totally not true. Mm -hmm. So you have boyfriend Tom, and then yes. I will be plaintiff Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I think. How about boss Tom? Uh -huh. uh, ooh, I like Taking it off here, boss Tom. Uh -huh. <laughs> but see, mm -hmm. since he's your man, he should be major Tom, mm -hmm. and I would be minor Tom. Oh, that's nice. That way, you know, since he's like the guy, mm -hmm. your major, mm -hmm. your major dude. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to settle on something. I kind of like work Tom versus play Tom. Or mm -hmm. day Tom versus night, night Tom. Tom. But mm -hmm. then sometimes you see him during the day. Like mm -hmm. on a Saturday, you probably I'll let him in, I assume, during the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, he stays chained to the tree, Tom. <laughs> He's not allowed in. Sometimes no. we have lunch, you know. I think there's a Starbucks in town that thinks that we're having an affair. It's great. Really? Yeah, it's great. Because you know how you we meet at the same Starbucks occasionally. And, oh, I see. You know, the people that work there kind of give you that look like, oh, mm -hmm. Well, that's because when, that's because, see, he's facing them and you're, uh -huh. when you look away, he makes funny faces with his lips. That's probably true. Hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, okay. oh, yeah. That's yeah, the sure standard. That's really, yeah. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your tongue Did in your it? mouth. Sorry. That's a really that creepy was, that tongue like a lizard snake. What was that? Snake. I missed it. No, so, you don't want to see, see it. See, let's just, let's just say, let's just say Chick oh. is the employee at Starbucks. Yes. And then and then I am facing them uh, right. sitting at the table. And, and I'm sitting you're my sipping, back to You're them. sipping your some, annoying, ex, uh, some annoying exotic don't drink. Don't show me your tongue again, please. And as soon and as you look away. You look away, and then, and then he goes, uh, with his tongue. <laughs> implying. Oh, creepy pink thing out of his face. Listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom Radio. 24 7, 24 7. Also with us, Christine Stedman. Now you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, I'm a grandpa. See, this is how this Are works. You? Yeah. She's uh, been married 27 years and still a virgin, Tom. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, 28. I have a, I have a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello? Sing! <laughs> I'm getting her fixed. <laughs> Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Sean Mori, and you're li Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom show. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, Chick. Jess Hooker had to take off from the news desk. There's Josh Arnold. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Frank Caliendo, Milwaukee Improv this weekend. Willie G, your host. If you happen to be in that area, see if you can get tickets. I think a lot of them have been sold. Um, while I'm at it, I'll remind you that this show is going to be on the road. On the uh, 17th of November, we'll be at the North Star Mohican Casino Resort in Bowler, Wisconsin. And that evening, we're going to do two uh, comedy shows featuring Pat Godwin, Joshy, right there, Jeff Oske, Willie G, Chick and I will be your hosts. 
And two shows, a second show has been added, details at North Star Casino Resort slash entertainment. One more thing, don't forget to uh, go online to bobandtom.com slash contest and uh, tell us a Halloween story. And you'll get a shot, by the way, at winning that uh, kegerator over there. It's a really cool sort of extra-large dorm fridge that will hold a keg. Three different types of kegs, I gather, fit in there. That's right. And it's got the tapper gizmo on top. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, time now for... Uh... Time now for uh, today in history. Here's Tom. What do you want, uh, uh... You're going to get mad at me for this. October 20th. What are you doing? Well, because this is one of my favorite guys. Oh. 1968. Yeah. Josh. Okay. You just jumped to 68. From zero to 1968. Yeah, because this is a big thing. All right. This gentleman used an unconventional move to win an Olympic gold medal. I'm going to go with Dick Fosbury. Correct. Dick Fosbury invented the so-called Fosbury flop revolutionizing the high jump <laughs> a true olympic event it's not break dancing it's the high jump a classic yeah just, uh, just the... see how high you can jump okay this is exciting <laughs> well i think it's uh, no uh... music no nothing <laughs> just jump out. yes yes it's it's basic and yet classic and okay. important and, I mean, the, the guy revolutionized the sport. Think about that. I hear that he had to come up with the Fosbury flop because uh, he was just so incredibly hung, he couldn't get his entire pack. I knew you'd go down that road. Oh, I'm so sorry. His wiener wasn't making it? Well, Dick was a nickname. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Leonard. No, no, Dick Fosbury. Flop. <laughs> Yikes. Um, Gigantic, Josh. On this date of 1973, the uh, Sydney <laughs> Opera House opened, one of the most famous uh, uh, buildings in the world. Oh, it looks like a conch shell, big seashell. Clearly yeah. an architectural mistake. <laughs> Aberration. Uh, nobody will remember it. Uh, well, let's do some birthdays. <laughs> we'll go back in time. Uh, that's that's it for what happened on today. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that can't be right. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to underscore the importance in my life of Dick Fosbury. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what amazing things actually happened, but he... <laughs> Boy, that's the truth. How, how, many, know, how many people have single-handedly changed the nature of a sport? Oh, Not many. Dick Fosbury. Did. Uh, Dick Fosbury. Uh, who who brought in the forward pass? Who gets uh, the dunk? Uh, Canute kind of does. Canute, he gets he gets a lot of credit for. Well, it. I heard uh, a couple days ago, Pop Warner had a lot to do with it too. Red Grange. Yeah, sure, they were. Yeah. He was. And Jim Jim Thorpe did a lot of, a lot to do with see, that. But that's very important. Uh, on this date, of yeah, eight, yeah. Let's not, not talk about that. 1882. Uh, I had always thought it was Bella Lugosi, but apparently it's Bela Lugosi. I take that from Bela Fleck. The Great musician. Help me, Eddie. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, made a bunch of really scary movies. Sure. Of course, uh, if you famous. haven't seen Ed Wood, watch it simply for Martin Landau. He's great. He won the Oscar. He did win the Oscar yeah. for that, didn't he? Yeah. Um, this would have been uh, Mickey Mantle's birthday today, born in 1931. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We had Mickey Mantle in the news this morning. They're trying to sell shares in his original home in Oklahoma. And his, Cher lives in his original home? Yeah. Uh, and no, his no, uh, li mind. liver died turn back in 73. Um, <laughs> well, his be, liver died. Happy birthday, <laughs> Tom, Tom Petty, 1950. Boy, this should be called... Dead birthdays. Can we get somebody who's alive? Dead birthdays. Um, <laughs> I like that. Danny Boyle. Is he still with us? He is still with us. Okay. All right. What does he do? Is he a director? Mm -hmm. Yep. Train Sl spotting. Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. millionaire. I never, I've never seen Slumdog Millionaire. It's great. Is it? Oh, really? yeah. It's, it's really, really good. good. Yeah, there's a one scene, though, that yikes. There's a fecal scene. Yeah, no, no, no. The, 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 oh, the there's the, a far uh, disturbing yes, scene. Yes, yeah, there's yeah. a disturbing scene. Yeah, I like it's not an easy watch. Uh, yeah, that's hard to watch. Have you seen Train Spotting? Because they go into a toilet. You and McGregor. He sure does climb toilet. right. Yeah. yeah, climbs right in, man. Ugh. That's a wild one too. Um, uh, Vigo Mortensen. Vigo. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo. Oh, Vigo. <laughs> oh, the uh, the guy from uh, Ghostbusters, Vigo? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not that guy. He's a living god, right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, never mind. Uh, Snoop Dogg. There we go. Uh, Snoop Dogg currently featured in the uh, Monday Night Football intro. Yeah. <laughs> that is a really good one. Real name, Leonard Cohen. It's got Isn't that something? He's got cereal out there and ice cream. He's mm -hmm, 50. Yeah. I say he's older than 52. Accomplice to a murder? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's very helpful. And now Friend you, uh, of Martha Stewart. You uh, have made the She's list. She's in jail. That's what, yeah. what I've heard. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, I'll go to other real things in history. This will make you happy. Abraham Lincoln formally established what as a national holiday in 1864? Now, remember, up until this moment, he wasn't going to tell us anything other than Dick Fosberg. <laughs> yeah. We're moving on. The high jump. 1864, Wait, I'm going to say you, Thanksgiving. That is correct. We just talked about that. A week ago. Shut up. I wanted to look smart. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe today was the formal acceptance oh, of Thanksgiving. Oh, had to wear ball gowns and stuff? Yeah. 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 But now, if yeah. you look at the turkey news, the like, turkey headline is, oh, my God, this is a great disaster. We're all going to die. What is it, Tom? You cut the turkey? Yeah, yeah there we go. Oh. Um, thank you, Chick. For thank you. You're welcome. And yes. then Dick Fosbury on this date. <laughs> uh, won the oh, gold medal in the high jump, of course. 1968, you know which games those were? Uh, 1968 games, Munich, right? No. Berlin? No. Berlin? Mexico, right? Mexico, you're right. 64 you're right. was you're Tokyo. Right, uh, Pat Godwin's glow-up continues, just one of the many things we learned today on the show. Uh, Jess Hooker filled in for Christy Lee today. We heard the Disco Lifestyle Awards featuring Sammy Davis Jr. I lost my eye. <laughs> I lost my uh, eye. Everybody loves my uh, baseball announcer voice. Very much. Best. Tom, they want me to do an entire sports cast like a baseball <laughs> announcer. That'd be good for uh, maybe a podcast. Um... Uh, we learned that uh, Texas has the most was curse it, words. Was I talking? <laughs> it's, it is incredible. Yes. I want someone to attack me at an ATM. <laughs> I'm waiting for them because I'm not going to stop until I hit street. I wish you would, says I'm, Chick McGee. I wish you would. I'm going to punch and punch and punch it. <laughs> Pat may have a sandwich later today. What mm -hmm. kind? Open-faced? Lettuce wrap, sort of, without, sandwich. Without the bread is what it without says the right bread, there. yeah. Yeah. It's They're not, doing a lot of great things. really a sandwich, right, no Josh? Bread. No, no, yeah, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> Dallas killed our president. Oh, right. Tom got annoyed about uh, Mickey Mantle and Mickey Mantle's house and uh, Mr. Ed is buried. There should be a museum. In Oklahoma. So people can see where he first crapped his diaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I said. I Tens not. of 20 people will be there Whoa. every day. Okay. <laughs> unless, unless they charge a thousand bucks a ticket, they're not going right. to make any money. With Texans cursing the most, do you think the original Don't Mess With Texas was a little more harsh? It sure was. Yeah. Don't effing mess with it. Okay. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Just got to get a hold of us. Call, fax, mail, or email. Get all the contact information you need at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.